morning, everybody. Good morning. It's morning. Morning. Gotta get down. It's morning. Uh, all right. We're gonna go get some coffee. Uh, we're gonna pop out the chat. We pop out at your party. I'm with the gang. And this gonna be a robbery. So tuck your chain. All right, chat's good. We're gonna get some coffee. And then we're gonna ask the question, can Tiny Grad run the open pilot model? You know, whenever the media asks a question, the answer is always yes or no or something, fuck the media. This is a good quote, right? Whenever the media asks something, the answer is always yes or no or something, fuck the media. Uh, oh. What was I gonna say? Oh yeah, uh, I like I like someone to quote from from one of my last streams. I, I love my quotes, um, you know. <laughs> uh, what 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 was the the Yogi Bear quote about baseball? Uh, what's up, Jonas? Uh, what's 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 the Yogi Bear baseball quote? Ah, uh, baseball is 90% mental. The other half is physical. Yeah, I, lo I love quotes like that. Uh, oh, let's, see if we, let's see if we can find it. Sometime I, I search myself on Twitter. No, 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 not, not any of this stuff. It's like having a fetish for imposter. Oh, yes. It's all about working hard and being a genius. And if you can be both a genius and work hard, the world is your oyster. But if you're not willing to do either of those two things, I don't know what to tell you. Oh, man. See, I love quotes like that. Because all quotes are dumb and meaningless. Walking to classes. See, thank you for subscribing. It's a beautiful Saturday. There's boats in the harbor. They're off there boating. Guys. I'm moving out of this apartment on Tuesday. I'm devastated. Calm AI is moving to a beautiful new office, but the beautiful new office is in a different neighborhood, so I'm moving to an apartment in that neighborhood, and it, it's a bit of a downgrade from this one. The rent is cheaper, but you know, it's, it's, it's a bit of a, what, what, oh no, 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 we're just gonna, we're not gonna train it. We're just gonna uh, try to run it, okay. So uh, let's kind of talk about where we are in Tiny Grad because the Tiny Grad, uh, you know, it's not the same Tiny Grad from uh, your childhood. Uh, I've been working hard on it actually. Um, so a few things you'll note. Uh, my latest refactor, uh, I'm not logged in, but uh, I can do a slot count. My latest refactor got us down to like 937 lines uh, and no more ocean view. And then I added a few more lines back, but um, that is a really powerful refactor. If you can reduce, it's, it's 70 lines of code less and it has all the same abilities that it used to have. Um, and the key was kind of this. So we used to write these, uh, these operations and you had to write both the forward and the backward of the operation. Um, but now we've added a second layer of abstraction. I talk about it here in the README. This is all public at um, this GitHub here. So I've moved uh, all of those operations to MLOps, and they understand memory allocation and derivatives. If you don't need memory allocation and derivatives, you can use these. Uh, what did it say? Oh, yes. Um, you can use these here, which are like the basic ops. I've realized that the main thing to think about about neural networks is asking the question, how does data move? Because if you want to run these things quickly, efficiently, and low power, the trick is all like understanding the memory access patterns and making sure you do a good job with memory access patterns. All right, I mean, this is classic, like, you know, the difference between a matrix multiply and a cache, ma cache aware matrix multiply. If this was a tutorial channel, I would all show you, but, you know, hopefully you all went to college. Um, or if you didn't go to college, you learned it anyway. And if you didn't learn it anyway, well, you know, today it's never too late to start unless you're like in your 40s, then it might be too late. Uh, I'm sorry, we discourage people on this stream because we believe in facts over feelings. Did I just steal that from 
If I stole that from Ben Shapiro, I'm sorry. That's not an endorsement of Ben Shapiro. Uh, it's definitely not an endorsement of Ben Shapiro. Um, he always wonder what you do and let him wonder who now. Ah, uh, okay. So we refactored ML ops into a single ML ops, and then we use these low level ops, which don't need to know anything about derivatives. Unary op, reduce op, binary op, movement op, processing op. This is already kind of what the GPU one looked like internally. Um, ML ops already a reserved buzzword. Well, I'm sorry, but we used it. Call me out for cultural appropriation. Uh, so you see we support three accelerators. We support CPU, which is NumPy. We support GPU, which is OpenCL. And we support Torch. Um, there are some, there's some support in here, like this is a uh, old style CUDA. Uh, this is old style metal. Uh, we didn't actually have anything on the TPU. I, I took some of the inspiration for LL Ops from what I was doing with Cherry. And then here's a &E as well. Uh, so we have an Ops a &E, uh, which kind of works. But now it's a lot more likely that we can actually get things like the a &E to work because we've reduced, if you want to add a new accelerator now, you can probably do it. I mean, this is a clean OpenCL implementation of all the specific stuff in 293 lines. Um, so we can go through kind of what these ops are. Okay, everybody should know what these ops are, right? These are unary ops, they're pointwise unary ops. Uh, reduce ops, sum and max, binary ops, take in two tensors and then go pointwise on them, right? So uh, it's not always pointwise because broadcasting supported. Uh, but yeah, so we support these uh, binary ops. A just means return the first one. Um, it's the only one there that might be confusing. These are movement ops, reshape, permute, and slice. Uh, reshape changes the shape of a tensor. You don't really have to make a copy for that one, depending on your backend data store. Uh, permute will flip the order of axes, and slice will, uh, you know, either pad or unpad uh, appropriately. You can unslice. My slice supports slicing this way too, not just slicing this way, uh, and you just get zeros. Uh, then we have processing ops. Unfortunate. Oh, so here is a great. This this was a great victory yesterday. You don't need a matmul operation because matmuls are just convolutions on one by one images. Uh, I, I was really excited to, to figure this out. Um, yeah, you can just, uh, well, let's see. Is it always is it exactly on a one by one image? No, it's not exactly on a one by one image, but um, if you think about your, okay, you have matrix dimension, you have M, K, and N. Uh, K is your channels in, N is your channels out, and M is your, your image size. Um, so you'll end up with an M by N uh, matrix and you do a one by one convolution on that. You can actually read my code for that right here in Tensor. So now MATMAL is not even an ML op, which means the der it's, a, it's a top level op, which means the derivative is all computed for you. Uh, now, unfortunately, we're using NHCW because PyTorch does. If it was NHWC, we wouldn't need these stupid transposes. You guys know channel order. Hopefully you guys know this kind of stuff. Uh, you don't know this kind of stuff you know you should be spending more time doing ml um yeah so this is a matrix multiplication um implemented as a convolution uh, now you can see in the processing ops there's actually three of them uh and i'm trying really hard to unify them but i haven't made much progress well i made some progress but um so you have to be able to compute the derivatives Right, the convolution has two derivatives. You have to do uh, the uh, input with respect to the output and the weights with respect to the output. So the input with respect to the output is called conv t. Uh, I used to call it conv dx, but it actually turns out that this is a transposed convolution. And there's some documentation of, uh, of what that means. Yeah, transposes are kind of expensive. Don't worry about that. We're gonna add a, we're gonna add a layer of indirection that's gonna, we're gonna make tiny grad lazy, basically. And then we're going to be able to combine a lot of these things um, and put a JIT at a really low level. But uh, don't worry about that for now. Uh, it's important to get the operations right and then make them fast. So this is ConfDW. This is the derivative uh, with respect, uh, derivative of the weights. Um, so yeah, you, you have the, uh, the derivative of the output with respect to your input is the weights. Uh, the derivative of the weights. So you see that's computed in here, uh, conv dw. 
and this is comp t. So this used to be called dx, but it's the derivative of a convolution with respect to the input is actually a conv transpose. And this is the code to compute a conv transpose with a normal conv. You have to flip two of the axes and transpose two of the axes. But unfortunately, it doesn't work if your convolution is strided. So we kept the uh, old implementation around here. Uh, and you can like see you can see why strided needs weird padding. I found these like cute animations. So this is uh, why strided needs weird padding. You have to like put zeros in between the uh, inputs. And that's not a normal uh, convolution operation. But I think we'll eventually be able to refactor this one and this one into one. And then we're just left with this one. Um, now, this is the implementation in the PyTorch one, uh, Torch and Grad Conf 2D Wait. It turns out the PyTorch one is actually wrong. Uh, this isn't the path that's usually used. This is like a slow path. But there's a bug in the PyTorch code. Uh, there was already an issue filed about it, but I wasted like two hours on this yesterday. And then I wrote my own version of it, and my own version doesn't have bugs. Uh, hopefully. It probably does have bugs, but we haven't found them yet. Um, the tests in TinyGrad are pretty good. They're all in CI. Uh, yeah, so here we go. Look at that green check. Um, let's actually... Did I respond to this pull request? So yeah, the if you wanna, this guy's been writing a CUDA port for TinyGrad. I changed the operation, so like he should, I mean, it's the same stuff. He should really just be able to reuse it and do the refactor to make it look like, uh, look like ops GPU. And hopefully this interface will be stable for a while, but you know, with me, you never know. Uh, it might not be with me, you never know. Wow, that's, that's, what, what, why I say that? That's, what, what am I saying? Uh, with anyone, you never know, because that's, if you can't make changes, you've become ossified in your procedure and your empire is about to decline. That sounds good. Um, cool. Okay. So let's run the open pilot model. We'll put this in a test. We'll call it test open pilot model. Bye. Great. Um, And in every one of my talented associates, guess what they deserve? Nothing short of that's appropriate. Okay. Uh, we have a little helper called fetch. We can use it. Um, we're going to fetch the open pilot model. Fetch is just a caching fetch from the web. Uh, the open pilot model is in self drive, model D, models. And it's called supercombo.onyx. We mm, probably shouldn't download the one off master. We should probably uh, I think I can just change the word master to this. Um, let's throw a user bin in Python up here. And let's say Python 3 test, test open pilot model. Okay, cool. Okay, so that'll download the Onyx. Um, now we're going to have to parse it with Onyx. Import Onyx. Pip 3 install Onyx. Oh no! No, don't make me have to fix things. Oh, this is very upsetting. Oh, uh, why doesn't this work? No, could not find Python libs. Do I not have them? Mm. 
Well, does it not like them because they're dilibs and it's discriminating against Mac? That sounds right. Let's call it discrimination. Good. Missing Python libraries. Mm. Pip install Onyx Mac OS. No. no. Okay, fine. Well, we'll try to build it from source. Let's see if this works. Oh, you found an issue? Bug report. Okay. This is a different error. Oh, we could brew install protobuf, but I don't really think that's the problem. There is some work around in the end. Yeah, but I'm not even getting that error. I'm getting a different error. Um, oh, maybe I can brew, brew install Onyx runtime and then it just has it. I worry about how much this is changing. No, stop updating things. No, updating is bad. All right, we'll brew install Onyx Runtime and see if that works. Onyx Runtime is pretty good. It comes from Microsoft. It's actually uh, super uh, fast. It uses CUDA graphs. What are EPs? Okay, and then we're going to go through the layers and make sure that we can actually uh, implement the layers in TinyGrad. And then if it's good, we will add loading Onyx support to TinyGrad. That'd be pretty cool. Then TinyGrad could run Onyx. If I recall, it's quite big if you build it. Oh, this is, come on, what's it doing? You have to update the world. Oh, you do. Yeah, we got to update the world, guys. I'm sorry, but, you know, the world's getting updated. Oh. They misspelled Onyx. Um, I think people at Comma don't believe that TinyGrad's useful for anything, but I'm gonna try to get TinyGrad. I'm gonna try to replace SNPE with TinyGrad. So you'll see we actually have some convolution kernels in OpenPilot now, um, in Thneed. So like, yeah, this is like the basic convolution kernel. I made it compatible with the SNPE one. Typo required for API compatibility. And then there's like a few optimizations. Uh, you know, you guys know a one by one conv is just a matrix multiply. A one by one conv has no concept of uh, height and width, so it's just. Yeah. Okay, okay, we're still updating the world, guys. I'm, I'm sorry, but all right, what can we do in the meantime? Um, we fetched the model. We'll say dat. Uh, we can't import Onyx yet. So we're gonna go through all the layers and figure out which ones we can actually write in the beautiful tiny grad interface. Um, it would be nice to actually make that first class. Because then we then we have we have first class uh, Onyx support. We're not going to be able to support everything, but we can know the things that we can support, and then we can like download Onyx models off the internet and and try them. And my hope, if we get TinyGrad, okay, if we implement lazy stuff and we implement jitting, and we implement TinyCuda, TinyGrad is going to be the fastest way to run models. Maybe even the fastest way to train models. You know, my goal is still to, uh, do they have ML perf with one GPU? Um, oh, here, I can show you guys a cool feature of TinyGrad while we wait. Now these are at the ML op level, but we will get them at the LL op level soon. Uh, TinyGrad draws beautiful graphs. 
So this is actually a graph of a model running with uh, SGD. You can see this is SGD down here. Here, actually, I think this one's kind of cooler. So this is three steps of the atom optimizer uh, running on this simple model. So you see that matrix multiplies are now convolutions. Uh, we have reshapes here. Yeah, and this is this is Adam running here. Um, and then we run the next step, and then we run some more Adam, and then we run the third step. So this is the forward pass of the model. Uh, this is where the weight matrix comes from. Uh, this is the new data here. So this is the 69, the batch size 69. Uh, put that down in there, down in there. Do the backwards pass. You can see the arrows are blue for backwards. Red means it's a dependency from the forward pass. These long-term dependencies are why you need so much RAM, um, because you have to store all the intermediate outputs. As you see, these the more edges you have in any slice of the graph, the more RAM you're going to need. Um, and then this is the last run of Adam. Uh, no, it's not a safe space for off-topic questions. Uh, you know where's a safe space for off-topic questions? Um, not here. So this is this is the graphs at the. Uh, hmm, I mean, we could write the layer of indirection. I, I have a pull request on TinyGrad right now. I'd have to rebase it. Uh, it's not pull request. It's a branch. I have a branch called Lazy. Um, and in Lazy, I add ops. Uh, and like I specify what the ops are. But this is all pretty old stuff. Okay, we, we'll, we'll put let's put ops back. Um, since it is kind of a good layer of interaction, uh, yes, save that. But we'll get back to the stated thing in a minute. Uh, so this is just a class called ops. Um, and this will, I'll use this to dispatch the ops. So if we go here, called movement. Up. Uh, that's right. Keep the order consistent. Uh, and we have processing. Okay, so we can change this up. Oh, okay, that's done. Uh, brew install Linux runtime. And then we can make this, oh, that already worked. Python 3 import Onyx, no module named Onyx. Pip 3 install Onyx. Mm, no, issue. Could not find Python libs. Missing Python library. Python library. Uh, oh, can I do this with an environment variable? Do you guys want to see me finish the ops thing or struggle with this more? Why come I can't click there and I have to do this? Would I be willing to break the thousand line constraint? No, bro. Then it's big grad. You want to be big grad like everybody else? All right, well, this doesn't work yet. I, I don't know. Well, we'll fix that later. Let's finish this first. Um, we already started it. Now, this just added, I know I just spent 20 lines on this and, um, you know, From tinygrad.ops import ops, 21 lines, sorry. Uh, and then we'll go in here to ML ops. And wait, actually, I think I can delete a line now. That line can go. Actually, no, it can't because I'm still using it. 
over there. So never mind. Um, that won't go through the layer of interaction. Permute object has no attribute up. Wait, did I get rid of the op? No, op should be right there. I don't get it. I didn't break that, did I? Oh, wait, what? I got rid of it? I don't know what happened. Okay. Um, but either way, now we can go in here to mlops. We can do a replace, find ctx dot op, replace with ctx dot, replace all. Okay. So I just basically added these uh, functions uh, to the to the class. Uh, movement op takes four positional arguments, but five were given. Yes, it's because I have. First off, it's not a reduce op; it's a movement op. And we have R here as well. We also have some Rs for the processing ops. So this is like a general purpose dispatcher layer uh, for my three LLOP implementations, CPU, GPU, and uh, Torch. And then our Rs here are stride and groups. So we have to pass in stride and groups here. Okay. Uh, movement op. Missing one required positional argument. Arg. Oh, well, arg equals none. Because it can be none for uh, reshape. Okay, cool. So now you can see here are all the uh, all the ops, all the like uh, all the ops running. I don't know. I mean, even though this layer of indirection takes up lines, I like it. Uh, let me do buffer as well. Um, no, it's not exactly what I want. Device dot buffers. Problem is I don't know how to get device. I don't think I can import it because then I have like a circular import or something. I should probably move device to here. We'll just put that as a two though. And proxy buffer call. Okay. So Hopefully you guys understand what I'm doing. Uh, it's like a, this is like a layer of indirection for the LLOP operations. So now when MLOps calls into them, it's actually calling through this layer. Uh, you can see them all printed here. You can see like, you know, what the op actually is for the network. Uh, Okay, cool. So now I can enable it with print LLOps equals one. Um, and you'll see that like the really nice thing about, you know, the, the power of TinyGrad is like the API, it, it can't have a complex API because the lines are, are, uh, are simple. Uh, just extracting some part of the code into a separate lib, well, it depends what it is. For like loading libraries, yeah, loading libraries really don't matter. Um, 
I probably won't. The Onyx Runner can, the Onyx Loader can stay outside. I have Torch Loaders outside. I have models outside. The important thing is that the core TensorFlow, the core Tensor library uh, fit. And make sure you get all the abstractions. And if you have lots of weird accelerators, you can put them outside too. But currently what's in here is the three basic accelerators. CPU, we're spending 111 lines on that. Uh, GPU, we're spending almost 300 lines on that. And then Torch uses a lot of the CPU stuff, so it's only 55 lines. Um, then we have a bunch of helpers in here for defining what a broadcast is, uh, arguments for convolutions, and this is the definition of all the ops, which should actually move to ops as well. Move to ops. Um, and these are the ML ops where we define the derivative of the basic 13 functions. It used to be 14, but we got rid of MATML. Uh, I include some neural network niceties. I include batch norm and a nice comp 2D that'll like do padding for you and that'll initialize like weights and biases and stuff. Um, yeah. This is that op indirection layer. These are the optimizers. Uh, so you see we support SGD, RMS, prop, and atom. And then this is the main tensor class. It's gonna be nice. We're gonna we're gonna ops is gonna be really nice. Uh, the font size is getting smaller every stream. I'm sorry. Uh, it's it's just hard for me to work. It's hard for me to work with it that big. Is that is that a lot better for you guys though? All right. So there we go. Look at that. So this is running a full uh, efficient net and doing inference on a a photo. We can pass in other photos if you don't believe me. And now with print LLOps, we can see what all the actual super low level operations are that are going into uh, an efficient net. Um, Cool, I'm glad it makes sense. Uh, okay, so we're back to trying to install Onyx. He always wonder what you do and let him wonder who now. Could not find Python libs, missing Python libraries. Uh, but I, I put it there. I can't CMake find it. D Python, let's try Python library. Mm, no luck. Why can't it find it? I clearly have the library. This is, this is real, right? Wait, what? Oh, I forgot a slash. Okay. Uh, I mean, I don't know what to... Okay, fine. I'm not even sure if that's the right environment variable, though this is one of the problems with environment variables here. You can fix the errors by appending to the CMake config. How is it finding the include dir okay, but it's not finding the libraries? Try setting the following. Feels like it's something in the setup pie. Yeah, it might be. I don't know. Um, update pip. Okay.
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Always could be that. Good point. Oh, it wasn't updating pet. Okay. I don't understand. There's some way to like pass in pip set environment variables. No, there's like a way to. Does not work. I feel like I've done this before and then I can, I can do something like this. Now at least we're not in pip land anymore. D Python executable. Python library is being passed in. What's the error now? Found Python libs. What's the error now? Protobuf compiler not found. Okay, that's a better error. Uh, I did brew install protobuf. Protobuf C. Protobuf compiler not found. I hate Google Protobufs for this reason. Lib protobuf dev. I did brew install protobuf, right? Is there a different one? Oh, it's not linked? Oh, okay. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, you just gotta force that. Yeah, yeah, get it in, bros. Lovely. What an experience. Okay. Now we can go back and we can try Python 3 import Onyx. Oh, wow, look, it works. Oh, it works. How come you don't know that it works? Stop coming up with the dashes. Onyx is not accessible. What? But I made it accessible. Oh, because it's still on old Python. You gotta get the new Python. I don't know, let's just close this. Reopen it. Okay, now it, now it finds it, great. 
Uh, okay. Onyx model. Um, parse. Okay, now I got this stupid Onyx thing installed. How do I use it? Do I have a demo overview? Nope. Um, hmm. Nope, this isn't. Oh, here, Python API overview. Oh, okay, now we're talking. Yeah, this is for stupid people like me. Good. I, I stop bytes. I O. You know, guys, it doesn't matter how good of a programmer you are. Uh, you still gotta, you know, copy and paste the examples because that's really programming is like plumbing. You just gotta find the pipes and you gotta stick them together. You know, programming used to not be like plumbing, but now it's like plumbing. So if you don't like plumbing, you're in the wrong uh, business. You gotta make sure your pipes are like really nicely stuck together. You know, you gotta use like grout or I don't know whatever plumbers use. Oh great, yeah, that was helpful. Uh, okay, Onyx save. Um, does this really just load the model? Oh, look, it does something. How come when it prints, it has... Ugh. Okay, uh, 4G in Onyx model dot a graph. Should we try to do this in a uh, in an IPython notebook? Let's say end since it's a node. I've been trying to not use stupid variable names. Graph proto object is not iterable. Ah, uh, well, that's too bad. Can you can you can you flux and solder? That's right. That's right. Good point. See, this guy knows the plumbing. Um. Okay. Can can somebody help me? Like, where where do I uh? Running shape inference. Uh, uh, There's like the, no, like, like, oh, do I have to parse the graph? No, no, that's irritable. Uh, I, like, for stupid people like me, what, what, Onyx, can someone, like, give me a, a thing that I can copy and paste? Oh, great, okay, cool. Uh, dot node? Oh, maybe I gotta do node. Node? Oh, node! Oh, yeah! Yeah, we got it with Node. Look, hey, yeah, cool. Um, yeah. Wow, Temporal Hydra. <laughs> I think we stole that name from Tesla. Um, oh, good thing it includes this doc string in every, uh, wow, that's taking up space. Oh, get started with Python. Good, good, good. For dummies. Uh... No, this is this is Onyx runtime. We're not in Onyx runtime. We're just trying to do Onyx. All right, uh, print n dot node type up type. Great. Okay, so here are all the ops in the open pilot model. I think it's uh, n dot input n dot output. Mm, so you can see how that kind of looks like the stuff I was printing out before. Great. Um, thanks, Alex, EDM. Uh, hey, so like, look, look, we're, we're, we're rich. We're, we're super rich. Uh, all right, let's like parse the shit and try to make it, uh, you know, go to, uh, why does the comp take 3M? Oh, cause it's a bias. Oh, right. um, Nah. Can you make the font bigger? Ah, oh, you know, is it bigger enough for you? All right. All right first, we probably have to do the uh, inputs. Let's do the inputs first. All right, onyx model dot input. Oh no. Print dir onyx model. Right, let's go. Let's go. Uh, what is it? Inputs. It doesn't even have nodes. This is terrible. 
This says input. It should work. Oh, no, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Onyxmod.graph.input. Oh, don't you love computers? Oh, that's so nice. All right, good. Oh, look, we got inputs. All right, cool. All right, so these are the inputs to the open pilot model. There's input images, there's big input images, there's desire, and there's traffic convention. I know chat loves a big font, but you know what? That's what chat gets. Oh, you like that font? Oh, I like that font. That's a good size. I can see that well. <sighs> okay. Am I in the whole way down? All right. Where's this Twitch music? Twitch soundtrack. We're gonna we're gonna try it. Soundtrack by Twitch. Uh, use soundtrack web player. Uh, yeah, sure, I'll do that stuff. Yeah, great. What did I not do? Um, oh no, I have to disable publishing VODs? What? Oh. I will set up virtual multi-track audio features. Oh, this is so hard. Okay, read instructions and help FAQ article. All right, let's, let's read the instructions. How do normal people use computers? Advanced audio mixer, virtual audio cable, OBS, okay. Here's OBS. We have to go to settings. Uh, output, enable advanced, uh, oh, here we go. Oh, that wasn't too bad. You will add or select your virtual audio cable. Audio. No, I don't have a virtual audio cable. Do I have to buy one? It's virtual, that can't be too expensive, right? Okay. Download and install Twitch Studio to add virtual audio cable here. If I have to reboot my computer for this, installing the advanced audio mixer. First navigate to the audio settings page in Twitch Studio, which I don't have. Oh, well, I do well, I don't have voice meter banana. Oh, uh, if this what? But you guys are going to hear the music anyway through the microphone. So I don't even understand how this is going to work. This is not going to work because you guys are going to hear the music through the microphone. And then I have to wear headphones. I don't want to wear headphones. I don't know. I enabled that. I'm, I'm pretty happy. That's, that's, that's good. Did I, did I enable something good? Did that, did that do it? I probably did it wrong. All right. Ah, oh, that's nice. No, no, I'm probably violating copyright right now. Dude, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go fuck up an RIA agent, you know? I'm give him a baseball bat. Who works for the RIA? Baseball bat. Yeah, you're gonna hear it like the sounds you hear from the mic. See, it's useless. Baseball bat. This one's for Kim.com. You know, well, I'm not advocating violence on my stream. Don't worry. It's a hypothetical baseball bat. I have to restart the stream. Fuck this, man. Fuck this and fuck the RIAA. Napster, man. What happened to Sean Fanning and Sean Parker? You know, you know, torn freaks, man. No, this is too hard. This is, no, I'm not doing because I'm not doing it. Like I don't mind doing hard shit, but when it's for copyright, motherfuckers, I'm oh, I charge you. Yeah, they gotta be calm. You know, stress really is taking years off your life. Oh yeah. All right. I felt good. All, all learn a lesson from it though. You never see it coming. You just get to see it go. Um. Need to meditate. Oh, uh, do we gotta meditate? Oh, uh, no, 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 no. We're good. We're good. There's just no music, and we all just have to accept that. You know what? I have an idea. Oh, you know what? I got you guys. I got you guys. I got you. I know what I'm gonna do. Hang on, I gotta find it. Where 
Where is it? No, don't tell me they're at work. You know what? I'm going to use Find My to try to figure out where they are. I'm going to put my AirPods on and listen to music. Oh, there we go. And you guys can't hear it because it's copyright. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I got you. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. You guys, there's no copyright violation if only I'm listening to the music. Yeah, here we go. Green squirrel in pretty bad shape. This is my Discover Weekly. This is a good song, guys. Green Squirrel in Pretty Bad Shape. First off, Pretty Bad Shape. Wow, like, that's just, that's just creativity, you know? You out of your clothes. Lie to your family. We're just listening to Green Squirrel in pretty bad shape again. I even forget how to use my own library, so we got to read the docs.
Okay, I feel calmer now. Am I open to general questions? Bro, if you're asking some bitch shit like, can I ask you a question? The answer is always no. You ask the question, if it's a good question, you live. If it's a bad question, you get banned, okay? Right? Does that sound like how we can do things around here? Did anybody tell you that this was a safe space? I have one word to describe them, and it's liar. This is a safe space for people with good questions and skills. Right? You know? That's the problem with safe spaces. Can you have a safe space? You know, for, for different types of people? You can't can't right look at cabra cadabra right look what happened to it um if you guys haven't watched bojack horseman you all you all should uh okay so like let's do you know let's start with like a few simple notes let's do zero through ten let's see what we got okay cool uh oh no some of these have initializers let's just start with this first conf can we do a single comp? Where is the data for the weights? Not in there. Where is the data? Because some of these things, like this here, it's an input, but it actually comes from. Uh, Input name, node app, oh, initializer. There we go. Let's do initializer too. Love when you get that. Thanks. That was that was exactly what I wanted you to print out. Wow, this is so helpful. Um, dims. Let's try np dot name. All right, all right, all right. That's something. These are, so this is where like all the weights live, right? Yeah, cool. <laughs> Prime subs are on an extra short leash here. <laughs> this is a safe space from bad questions, absolutely. That's true. That's true, you can't have safe spaces for everybody. You know, what do you do when like a, you know, a, a Jew and a Nazi are in the same room? You can't, they can't have a safe space for both of them, man. You know, one must die at the other hands. I read Harry Potter, I know it's up. Um, I don't really want more coffee, but I want something. Let's see what we got here. Uh, all right, lemongrass, coconut, flavoring, sparkling water, real lemongrass extract. Tastes nasty, bro. How come this one has dims and it's like a normal thing? Oh, and then like raw data maybe? Oh, and then like maybe we care about the data type? See if that works. Uh, all right, good. That seems pretty good. I don't know if one means uh, float, but here we can do the math a little bit. That's 128. Yeah, yeah, we're good. Okay. Uh, assert np.data type equals one. 
Okay, we can say tensor sub in d.name equals tensor. Uh, maybe we do np dot from bytes np dot raw data d type equals np dot float thirty two shape equals np dot dims and that should just work. Uh, import numpy as np. This should just support improvs as well. Uh, module numpy has no attribute from bytes. From buffer. Shape is an invalid keyword from, from buffer, okay. Uh, interpret buffer as a one-dimensional array. It's called like this from string as well. Um, it doesn't help me. Okay, fine, dot reshape. Does that work? Great. Uh, let's print all the tensors again. Now we have a lot of tensors. Wow, look at all those tensors. Uh, okay, calm, okay. You open a can of sparkling water, bro. Bro, talking about teenagers, bro. Okay, um, seems pretty good. Let's go to the nodes. Get weights and biases. And then let's see how many of these we can actually make work in uh, Okay, we can't have dilations. One is not dilation. Kernel shape, don't even have to specify that. Oh, it has pads, but that's okay. I think we can just pass that into pad 2D and it does have strides. Okay. If n dot op type equals equals conf, let's implement conf. Um, so there has to be three inputs. We say uh, x w b equals n dot input. Uh, no, that's not exactly right. We want to, uh, tensors sub x for x and n dot input. Okay, cool. So those work. Now, let's use the beautiful TinyGrad API. I really do think the TinyGrad API is beautiful. So we can say x dot, uh, you know what, let's name it t because tensors is getting too long to type. I'm not gonna accidentally reuse t somewhere else. No, we should use the word tensors, that's good. Yeah, we gotta use longer variable names, uh, okay x.conv2dw. Uh, and then we want to do a bias. I have an implementation of this here. Oh. Like conv2d actually supports a bias? I didn't know that. Why? Why does it support a bias? In the ML ops, it supports a bias. No, it doesn't. Oh, but this is in uh, this is in tensor. So in the base op, it doesn't. But in this op, it does. Okay, cool. Uh, so great, we can just pass in the bias there too. That's pretty nice. Um, we do have to figure out the strides. Wow, these attributes are so bad. Uh, Attribute to dict. Hey. Uh, 
return. Let's use a dictionary comprehension. Uh, X dot name. Okay. Um, attribute parse. Uh, we can try for x and a uh, dot items. That's right. And then we say attribute parse if a dot type. Uh, just print a dot type. We can try attribute to dict n dot attribute. Google protobuf pyxt has no interviewed items. Uh, oh, no, 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 sorry. Uh, that's just going to be A, because it's not actually a dictionary yet. All right, cool. Uh, all right, we're getting sevens and twos there, great. Um, if a dot type equals seven, don't ask me how I knew that. It's because I'm the mole. Um, return a dot ints. No, well, I maybe something like int x for x and a dot ints. If a dot type equals equals two, uh, return int a dot i. Uh, raise exception. Can't parse a dot type. Gen exps. Who wanted gen exps? I don't want gen exps. Tuple. No. Does that not? Good, I don't want generators. Really? If I do that, I get a generator? I hate generators. All right, cool. Um, all right. Let's call it opt. Uh, assert opt sub dilations equals 1.1 because that's not supported. Here we can say uh, x dot pad two d. No, oh yes, uh, x dot pad two d uh, op sub pads dot conf two d uh, wb, and then we want to pass in strides equals op strides. Uh, groups equals opt subgroup. Um, out. We can actually say tensors sub output. We gotta say n dot output. Cool. Does that work? Got an unexpected output. Just stride. Unhashable type. Why does anything a repeat scale or container? I hate this. Nothing should be anything like that. I got rid of all the proto crap. Why is why does anything a Oh, don't tell me the output is up. Okay, cool. So that should run the convolution. Mm, great. And on to the next one. Let's see what the next one is. Oh, the next one's an LU. 
Uh, we have LUs, don't we? Tiny God has LUs, right? Do we not have LUs? We have GELUs, but not LUs? Okay, we'll have to implement LU. I can't believe we don't have LU support. All right, we'll add LU. Um, so what's the definition of an LU? Uh, wow, I really can't believe we don't have values. We can say return self dot ralu, and then it's just e to the x, which is x, right? Minus neg. Uh, self dot x minus one dot value. Uh, now you see we write that code and we don't know if it's right. So let's go add it over here to tests. Do I have a test for swish? Yeah, I test swish. Okay, uh, we'll have a test for ReLU. Test for ReLU. Um, torch functional LU, tensor LU. Uh, Python 3, test, test ops, test ops, dot test LU. Great. Did I really just get that right? Let's try to break the test. Let's just like make it a ReLU and like see if it complains. Okay, good, it complains. Oh wow, first try, boys. First try, all right, we can also test it in GPU. Yep, that's good, and we can test it in Torch. Okay, that's good. Um, get add, we use LUs in the uh, common model. Add LU support. Okay, we have LUs now. Uh, so now we can go back to this, and we have LU. Uh, if op type equals LU, uh, tensor sub n dot output zero equals uh, tensor sub n dot input zero dot LU. Else raise exception. Uh, op type and not op type not support. Move this down here. Get rid of that. Spell things right. There we go. Op type add not supported. Okay. We gotta support add. Add's really easy, don't worry. Actually, should I just make that universal? I think so, yes.
very rapid. Uh, there we go. It's easy. Oh, they're so easy. Oh, yeah, but the easiest thing we ever added. All right, cool. Op type flatten is not supported. Why does it have an access parameter? I, I don't understand. Oh, because we're flattening to that. Okay, that's fine. Wow, wait, we're already there? Oh my god, we moved down the model so fast. Uh, wait, we're already at the flatten. Look at that. That was so fast. Okay. Uh, so now we have to do flatten. Flatten is just a reshape. We do have opt, uh, opt sub access. Okay, in P's of zero dot shape colon that, comma minus one. No, plus minus one. Uh, ret equals np dot zero dot reshape. Actually, do I support flatten? No, I don't. Flatten's kind of stupid. I mean, we could uh, to do add to tiny grad. Uh, can only concatenate tuple, not list to tuple. Oh, we can't concatenate a list to a tuple. Everybody knows that. Um, shape equals tuple. Okay, we're up to concat. Flattens the other axes. Okay, that's fine. Uh, oh, we should also know the output shape. Do we not? No, actually we don't. Okay. Uh, the op type is concat. Um, tiny grad supports this, I believe. I'll uh, just call it cat. Here we go. Uh, oh, now, okay, here's one of the annoying things. I believe this only takes two arguments. So we have to do it recursively if we have more. Uh, let's say assert length in p equals two. Uh, if it is two, we can say ret equals in p dot zero cat in p one. Oh, does this take an access? It does. Uh, dim equals, uh, we can do that everywhere. Can't parse one. Okay, okay, that's fair. Let's see what a one is. Oh, it's a float. Oh, that might be an arg that might be the alpha argument to LU actually. Uh, we can waste time on that later. Oh yeah, it's alpha. Uh, so actually that's an argument we support. Oh, we should test that. Meh, it's a later problem. Uh, either way, we're gonna support it. Alpha equals op sub alpha. Okay, op type gem is not supported. Well, a gem is really easy. Attribute trans B. Oh no. I don't even know what A and alpha and beta are. I casted the float to an int. Good point. You're right, I did. That's tragic. Thank you.
Thank you for catching my bugs. Uh, all right, let's do dot map mall in P and one. Uh, if op sub trans B, uh, all right, let's just say AB equals imp. Uh, we can say B equals transpose, B equals B transpose, rat equals A map mall B. I don't know if that's universal on all of them. Too many values to unpack. Expected two. Oh no, there's actually more than two because there's a uh, bias as well. Uh, I guess put that. I don't understand what trans B is then. Never mind, that's a later problem. Uh, I have a helper called linear. This is actually linear. Okay. Uh, unbroadcastable shape mismatch. It doesn't even look right. Something about that trans B that we have to understand. It's just this. Okay, op type ReLU is not supported. Well, we're really getting into the easy ones now. ReLU, ReLU. Okay, multiple concats. Um. Op type split is not supported. Okay. Uh, all right, all right. We got a we got a triple split going on here. Yeah, yeah. Trans B transpose the second matrix. We're we're, we're past that. All right, we got to do split. Uh, split print. Um. Op dot split. Okay, this is oh. This one has multiple outputs. That's not that big of a deal though. Uh for O dot S in N dot and zip N dot output. Uh, op split uh, i equals zero uh, tensors sub n dot output tensors sub o that's fine uh, equals We have an argument called slice, yeah. We can also do this as like a get item. I just don't really know how to write it for arbitrary axes. Uh. That's right. 
right. Uh, int object has no attribute slice. Oh, oops. We want to say np dot zero dot slice arg, and I don't think we can just say arg. I think we have to say arg equals arg or something. Yeah, I'll say arg equals arg. Uh, yeah, now that is actually fine. We'll just continue here. Okay, op type sigmoid is not supported. Don't worry, that one's very easy, boys. Very easy. Very easy. Sigmoid. Sigmoid. Oh man, we're rich. Op type mull is not supported. Don't worry, that one's as easy as that. Op type tnh is not supported. Guess what? It's as easy as sigmoid. Op type sub is not supported. Oh, I love when it's the easy ones. Oh, we did it! We did it! We are through the entire model. Now, watch. Are you guys ready for the power of tiny? Graph equals one. Oh yeah, right, who wants to see a graph? Uh, I have that argument to do that here. Whoa, is that a graph of the open pilot model? Whoa, look at that. Look at those Hydra heads. Oh, that's so beautiful. Oh, that's so beautiful. Oh, that's, 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 most, that's, that's beautiful. That's beautiful shit, man. Oh, yeah, look at that. Whoa, this is all running on your mobile Comma 3. It used to be a phone, now it's a Comma 3. Yeah, because, okay, like, we get in here, yeah. See, those aren't even connected. So this is the efficient net V2. Then here you can see we start with the efficient net, uh, yeah, right? This is where we start with the B0, and B0 comes down here. And everyone at works like, George, Tinygrad's useless. Tinygrad's doing so much. Gonna, we're gonna make TinyGrad accelerate the network on the Comma 3. And then this is where you get into the Hydra head here. Uh, you can see it gets split. Those are weights, yeah. Yeah, so see it's, it's split here. Oh, that's pretty nice, right? And there we go, that's the output. Go all the way down to one output. We can cat all the outputs together. That's what all these ads and slices are. Yeah, right, right. Uh, check out what else we can do. We can print LLOps. Whoa, look at that. All right. Uh, hmm, let's just factor this a little bit. Yeah, that was a, that's gonna be the coolest moment in the video. Uh, if you missed it, uh, sorry. Test open pilot model here. Um, we can run Onyx. Uh, oh, we should actually return the outputs too. Yeah, we should, uh, we should not put zeros in for the inputs. Should take in the inputs. Um, oh, did I delete? I should have committed that. Oops. Uh, 
that or something. And zero tests. Do I have to put in a class? Is that how these things work? Oh, 723 viewers. All right, people like this one. Uh, do I really have to put it in a class? Okay, fine. Yeah, I run Onyx uh, dat. Onyx dot load model dat. Right, let's go. Very cool. Great. Uh, okay, well, we should deal with inputs and outputs better, but let's commit this before we break anything. Now, check this out. Uh, forget that. You want to run the model on the GPU? Just say GPU equals one. Now it runs it on my GPU. Look, it takes half a second shorter. You want to run it in Torch on the CPU? Let's run it in Torch. Wow, it's even faster. Torch on the CPU is faster than my shitty OpenCL kernels. Can you believe it? I can. But that's what happens if we just run it on the CPU. Yeah, use PyTest. Yeah, I don't know. We'll look into that someday. Okay. Um... Unhashable type, okay. Oh, it has like stupid, uh, I see, that's too complicated. Let's just do fp.name. We could also do an assert to make sure the dimension is right, but I think it should be. Cool, there you go. Now we're getting the output. Tiny Grass is so good. <laughs> Like how how easy was that? We just we just ran the open pilot model in seventy seven lines, and we added LU support that fast. All right, great, it works. And I see we can do it on GPU too. And then we get like GPU buffer. It doesn't actually copy it back. I think Torch buffers get copied. Uh, oh, what's it complaining about? Oh, yeah, meh. Uh, okay, so it doesn't complain. But you'll see that when we run it on the CPU and we run it on Torch, this is a completely different backend, and we get pretty much the same values. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Actually, this is kind of wrong. Let's return a dictionary here, outp.name, yes, that. I you love dictionary comprehensions. They're the best kind of stuff. One and a half hours, easy. Yeah, because it's like, it, the TinyGrad API is, is, because it's restricted in line count, the API has to be simple to use. Uh, this should be supported. Yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna add flatten support and we're gonna add, uh, we're gonna add multi-cat support and we're gonna write some tests. And then the Onyx code will be even simpler. Because those are things that should be in TinyGrad. So one of the nice things about TinyGrad is when you add things to the tensor class, these are high-level ops. So there's high-level ops in the tensor class, mid-level ops in here, which understand memory allocations and derivatives, and then the accelerator ops here are the low-level ops. 
So those things are going to get added to TinyGrad. Add multi cat to TinyGrad. Add flatten to TinyGrad. No question marks. Um, should we add multi split? Nah, multi split seems stupid. That one I don't agree with. But multi cat, I think we can actually see up. The uh, yeah, let me add multi. Well, that's okay. Let's first add flatten. That one's easy. Um, where should we add flatten? Thank you. Transpose uh, flatten self. Uh, what, what is the argument for flatten? It's called uh, access. I feel like I call a lot of stuff dim instead of access. I'll call it dim. You like access more than dim? Someday we can change it. Uh, but either way, we should be able to change this now to just say uh, np.flatten ops of access. All right, great. Cool, we did that fine. Let's write some tests for flatten. and got an unexpected keyword access. What? Torch flatten doesn't support access? Does torch flatten call it dim? Oh, look, it calls it dim. Uh, oh, end dim. I actually like that better. I like that better. Let's copy that. Just, it's end dim. We can just write the test in there for now. We'll deal with this later. Shape is mismatch. Okay. Um, if end dim is zero, and we say flatten axis equals zero, no, it's actually start dim. Make sure our tiny guy tests are still passing. Uh oh, we broke something. Oh, I hate that. I I hate that other people can't see it. Uh oh, no module named Onyx. Oh. 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 If 
fine. We're installing Torch. If we're installing, wow, we installed an old version of Torch too. We could support the Torch stuff with Start Dim and End Dim. Uh, I think Reshape with in Torch is no copy ops with Flatten. Yeah, don't worry about copies. Um, actually, you know what? I don't even like that it's called Dim. We should probably call it Start Dim, don't you think? Whatever, doesn't really change anything. Okay. Um, I mean, it works, you know, okay. A few things we should probably do. Uh, let's add, yeah. Let's add inputs here. We're just gonna, Latin into. Hmm. That work. Well, I didn't realize NumPy gave such stupid cryptic errors too. Uh, did we get different outputs? Yeah, we did. Look at that. Uh. Traffic convention is which side of the road you're on. Cannot interpret eight as a data type. I'm sorry. How annoying is that? Uh, this has no attribute shape. Oh, I guess we should really change the 
D type here too. Actually, I think that's automatically done by the tensor class. But either way, that can't hurt. Wrong shape for input traffic convention. Ah. Uh, Ready. Gotta put some more brackets there, just like that. All right. Great, now we're on. To Let's see if CI passed. Uh, did CI pass? Nope, CI still doesn't pass. Did Onyx not install? What, why did it install? Should have installed. My editor requirements.txt. Uh, is that not respected? Did it get from somewhere else? Oh, maybe it's this. Okay. Cool. Uh, we should probably also have a uh, sanity check using Onyx runtime to confirm we actually get the same outputs. Um, great, not a single one for Python examples. This will use that at a comma, so it shouldn't be too hard. I thought I brew install this. Great. Pip install on X runtime. doesn't work on M1s. I'm not using Conda. Conda. Nope. Um, torch load onyx. Here we go. Terrible. There's a tor convert onyx to torch. Yeah, 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 like I'm building it. Great, it's here. No, it's like this stuff here. Great. Oh, it's actually, okay, we shouldn't actually put onyx load model. Same thing as just onyx load. Yeah, so we'll say onyx model. We'll move onyx load down to here.
Okay, let's just try it then. Torch model inputs, you say, this is tiny grad out. And we'll call this torch out, print torch out. Oh, whoa. Oh. That's a joke. Oh, I think that's actually that's actually my fault. Dictionaries are ordered now in New Python. Uh, okay, yeah, no, no, no. We have to do. Uh, Star torch dot tensor x for x and set values. Sounds good. Expected scalar type double, but found float. So upsetting that NumPy's default is uh, not float 32. Pretty similar to me. Uh, not a real test if you don't have more asserts. Dict object has no attribute numpy. Okay. Tensor object has no attribute numpy. Really? I thought I had a, I thought I had numpy. I, mean, I really don't have that. How do these tests work? Oh, they're using dot data. Okay, they should not be using dot data. This can use dot data, but nothing else can. Does Torch have numpy? Gradients.
of like a testing thing I use in a bunch of places. Ten. Wait, can we talk about how I got seem to get this right on the first try? No, no, no. I'm speaking too soon. Let's see if that test passes. No, okay, it doesn't pass. But actually, that's probably within, uh, that's actually probably fine. Great. There's some, there's some big, uh, there's some big numbers. Cool. Gross. Was that not the easiest thing ever? Let me throw Onyx to Torch here and in testing. Uh, okay, still failing. Why is it failing? Is it now gonna complain like, oh, Onyx can't be installed cause I'm a bitch. Is that the problem? Mm, import Onyx. It's complaining about proto buffer crap. God. Onyx package is garbage. Uh, all right, do I have to like apt get install something? Oh, you have to install a compatible version of Protobuf. I don't know why I have two. Oh, apt install protobuf compiler. I mean, maybe. I don't think I have to. We'll, 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 we'll go to apt if we have to. But uh, one of the problems with, all right. We'll get this test fix and then that's today's stream. Um, the power of tiny grad. Oh, we gotta add multi-cat to tiny grad. Uh, let's go do that. That is in tensor. Yeah. Maybe we can support a splat here. That sounds good. Uh, okay, for Y and Rs, yes. Um, I don't really understand. Oh, okay, deal with negative dimension.
Let's first make sure we didn't break anything. Well, hang on. This one's trickier. Uh, okay. That's okay. We, we need the sum of the shape. That's not right. This actually isn't supported. Oh no, it is. It is supported. How much do we want in the front? Okay, we want negative here. Negative in the front. And then for in the back, we want shape sum minus. All right, so we're, we're trying to, we're putting like some here and then we're gonna add them all up at the end. Uh, no, that's not exactly right. Um, okay, we wanna do shape sum minus K minus Y dot shape sum one. That should be right. Uh, assert k equals equals. Now we're gonna have to do that. And that equals self dot slice uh, arg s dot zero, uh, and then turn that uh, four. Oh, well, actually, right? Plus 
plus equals y dot slice uh, r equals t s. Turn that. That should work. Hopefully, that should leave the existing tests working too. We fixed the CI tests. Oh, sweet, we did. Okay, uh, int object has no attribute shape. Mm. Oh, because that's not, okay, we can just fix that in the. That is a bug in the test. That was on line 232. Oh no, the test line is 233. There we go. Uh, dim equals dim. Can only concatenate list, not tuple to list. Okay, okay. I see you're upset about my tuple. Type has no attribute CPU. Who said anything about a non type? None? Why would that be none? What? Ret plus equals, why not slice? Is something wrong with plus equals? Well, that's weird. Plus equals not work? That's a serious bug. Do we not test that? Self dot assign. Okay, now we just have a shape mismatch to deal with. Wow, plus equals was broken? Could someone add a test for plus equals and submit a pull request, please? I can't believe I broke plus equals. I believe in you guys. I haven't asked Twitch for anything yet, uh, but someone, we need a test for plus equals. All right, now my shapes are just wrong. Uh, why are my shapes wrong? I don't really actually need to subtract. I think it might just be that. We're back to this. All right, I'm concerned about that. Shouldn't really be doing a sign. Get rid of self data sign. Uh, somebody could look into the plus equals issue. I would appreciate you. Uh, let's go here now. Oh, well actually let's add a test for multi-cat. Sweet. 
now we can change this to do np.cat splat np1 dim equals opt access. And we're going to set ready for that. Man, I love programming. print these. I, li I like seeing that there, you know, you can like trust the test and you know that they're similar, but when you print them and the numbers look similar, you're like, wow, wow, tiny grad's good. Oh, look at that. The numbers are similar. Oh, love when the numbers are similar. Okay, great. Uh, good. We added that to the API. Uh, I don't know why plus equals doesn't work, but at least now we just don't support it anymore. Um... Yeah, the R methods, those are fine, probably. It's just a sign that doesn't work. Uh, yeah, but we've changed a bunch of stuff internally with the buffers, so. It's actually somewhat unclear what you want to do when you do plus equals. Um, like, it should be supported as syntactic sugar, but internally, you don't really want it to do anything. Where's the sign? I don't understand why that doesn't work. Especially if I make it return self. All right, can I trust one of you to solve the plus equals thing? Can I hope somebody did enough reading and understands tiny grad and can fix, make sure plus equals work, write a good test for it? Uh, I'll appreciate you. Dude, we're running this on the GPU of my Mac and we're getting the same answer uh, that Torch gives us. And by the way, can we talk about how few bugs this thing has? I hit this on the first try. You saw me do this. I, I didn't do any, uh, uh, thank you, thank you for the subs. Uh, like, I, I didn't do anything, uh, I didn't do anything crazy. We should probably support dilations. Pads might want to move to conv. Uh, so we don't have to do the pad 2D. Oh, our graph should be a little bit tighter now. You guys missed it before. Ooh, hype train, hello people. Oh, by the way, you know we can do gradients of all this stuff too. Um, we're not gonna get to that just yet, but uh, you could generalize this script to other Onyx models? Hell yeah, go try it. Here, uh, okay, you know what? I'm gonna rename it. That's a good point. Fine. That's one of my, I, I was saying, I was saying to Alex yesterday, I feel like 
I could win some uh, some advent of code right now. Like I just I'm just in the mood where I feel like I, I'd just be winning. Uh, you know what I mean? First try. Boom. I never done this before. I didn't like this. Isn't like I did it off stream and then I copied it. Like you saw me have to write all the stuff. Uh, we have some beautiful new syntactic sugar for uh, for Tiny Grad, and y you know that Tiny Grad now works on all the gradients too. Oh man, this is this has made me committed to. And you know, people at work are gonna be like, George, you know, you should just write new stuff. Don't use Tiny Grad, but now I'm committed to using to to shipping Tiny Grad in OpenPilot because of how easy that was. Make sure I didn't break nothing. Uh, cool. All right. Should, should we uh, should we let everyone talk a little bit? Let everyone talk. And that was today's stream. All right. Do we want to try one other Onyx model? Should we try one more Onyx model? Does that, does that sound nice? We'll add a, we'll add a, we'll add a second Onyx test. We'll test like a ResNet or something. Is there any way that Torch to Onyx actually supports? Uh, I don't really like that they're just like in order. This is the stream for the weekend. No, I don't think we're doing stream tomorrow. I think I'm going to land. Does Tiny Grad export to Onyx yet? Uh, no, but that'd be pretty easy as well if we cared. I mean, Tiny Grad's not really meant for export like that. I would. Yeah, maybe, maybe we do want, I don't know. Someday we can write exporting to Onyx. I wonder if we can, um, I mean, this is short enough that we can almost fit it in main Tiny Grad. If I really do like the idea of Tiny Grad being able to run uh, generic Onyx models. We have a torch loader too, but the torch loader is so broken in comparison. Well, no, uh, the idea of Tiny Grad, Tiny Grad in some ways is a lot more like Onyx runtime, right? The idea of Tiny Grad is that you can, uh, like you export your stuff and then, well, oh God, oh, you haven't seen the graph yet? See, look, we can see the res connection, right? It looks like a res block, right? Like there's the ad going down there. Um, is there a difference running it on Q? Well, no, like here, I can I can run it on the GPU. Of, that'll run it on the GPU of my Mac. All right, let me see it runs faster. Oh, it's sitting in my show. Uh, oh, you'd love to see some code forces. Bro, if you weren't a subscriber right now, ugh. Look at that double permute. Look at how stupid that is. We doubly permute the matrix. But you see, that's this is this is where uh, this is where we're gonna get the tiny grad optimization layer, and we're not gonna actually do it at this layer. This layer is the ML op layer. We're gonna do it at the LL op layer. Make sure I didn't break CI. Oh no, I broke CI. What did I do? What?
Wait, this says I broke the optimizers. Oh no. Did my plus equals, does plus equals work sometimes and just not for me? Because we use plus equals in the uh, optimizers, do we not? Yeah, we do. I don't even know how they ran at all. Okay, we do have tests, which is even weirder. How did it not work? It's like just broken. I don't really get it. And now it works again. Wow, that should not silently fail like that. How come when I do plus equals it doesn't work? All right, fine, I'm solving the plus equals problem. It broke CI. I don't really get that. And NANS? Weird. Okay, we have some weird bug. Got a sign that should work fine. Dispatch is just calling apply. Very weird. Plus equals is broken. What could the problem be? Okay, let's reproduce it. Uh, where's a good place to put this? Is it in any of these tests already? Test the garbage collector, dot test the LLOps, test speed, Onyx, train, Okay, we'll put it in here. Whenever something breaks, add a test. Okay, uh, A equals tensor dot randon. Is randon, does that work? Yeah. Uh, 10 by 10, B equals tensor dot randon, C equals A plus B, C dot numpy, A plus equals B, uh, dot testing dot search all close now one delta yeah none type attribute has no numpy how is that doing that that shouldn't assign it should it OK. 
Okay, we do have to return self. Um, I guess I just don't understand. Okay, we'll read the optimizer and see why this isn't a problem. I guess because it's, yeah, okay, that's fine. All right, we'll just try, we'll try. I don't understand why my fix didn't work then. Okay, fine. Test multicat. Now let's go back to cat. Does it work now? None type object has no attribute data. Not none. There must be a problem in the gradients. Yeah. Okay, what if I get rid of a sign? Then it works fine. I don't really like that that returns anyway. Test plus equals works. Does test MNIST work? Didn't I try this too? Okay. Now that doesn't work. Hmm. Okay, here's an idea. We'll leave self a sign. but we'll put tensor around it. No. Okay, 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 fine. Fine, fine, fine. I know what to do. Don't worry, don't worry. I got this. I got this. Let's go. Okay. So we don't actually, what we want to return is what's inside there, but we don't want to, uh, so, uh, in place, uh, self, ret equals dispatch, self.x, self.assign, ret, Okay, that works, that works, and that works. Great, that's all of them. Uh, is there a nice one liner to do this in a lambda? Am I getting greedy? Self.grad equals x.grad. Yeah. I don't really think that's right. I think that's gonna break the autograd engine. I, I think what we're doing now is way more correct. Because we're assigning it, but we're also uh, 
returning the right thing. I didn't really understand that that's how... Uh, Is there a way to write this as a lambda? Oh, wait, maybe I'm just doing this wrong. Return X. This sounds very elitist. Yeah, have you ever been to my stream? Keep hacking elite, bro. It's my slogan. Now, you all know what my slogan means, right? My slogan doesn't mean that a person fundamentally because of themselves should be excluded from hacking. My slogan means that hacking is an elite set of skills. Any person, any individual of any nationality, race, color, creed, even if they like mayo, can come to the hacking party. But you have to bring skills, right? Right, 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 you see what I mean? Okay, let's say you're going to a party and the party is a potluck and there's food, right? Every person is welcome at the potluck, but they have to bring food, right? And that's what it's like when I say keep hacking elite. I mean, like, there's an elite level of skill that you need to acquire to join the party. Now, you can sit there, and just like at home, you can sit there and you can make food, right? And then once you have food, you're welcome at the potluck. But if you don't have any food, you're a fucking freeloader and you can get out of my potluck, right? Does that sound fair? All right, good. As long as, as long as we all understand mayo is disgusting and should not be tolerated. And if we could, you know, crack down on the, the, the gratuitous use of mayo everywhere. All right, great. Look, I fixed it. Oh, I fixed it with one line. See what I mean? When you fix something with one line, the fix is probably better. That's just Kolmogorov complexity. Yeah, fixed with one return X. Your chat is kind of outdated. Oh no, man. Around here, we're never afraid of being outdated. Uh, Oh, Skrelly's live? Uh, all right, all right. We really, we let, we let the stupid out when we let the non-subscribers talk. Um, dang, you guys missed my HDL stream where I got, where I got Xilinx compiling on Mac. Like, you know, we doing this, we doing this. Hmm. Uh, all right, all right. The, the what Mac are you using is the reason that we're back to subscriber-only chat. Does it matter, bro? Does it really matter? Your skills don't have anything to do with your computer. Your skills are all up here. If you have skills, they're up here. Oh, Alex left to go do nails, and uh, now I have to make my own lunch. And that's sad, because my lunch is going to be really lame. Uh, all right. Cool. Uh, oh, did we? are we going to run one more? Are we going to run one more? One more Onyx? How are we doing on viewers? 785. Okay. All right. We'll run one more Onyx. But first, we got to make some tortellini. Um, if you blame computer, then you shouldn't be using it. A poor craftsman blames his tools. That's right. Dude, remember that time that we ran the open pilot model in TinyGrad? Oh, see, look at this. There's an empty 
three box thin mints in the fridge. Who did this? I've been eating strawberries, and I get little bits of strawberries stuck in my teeth, and I don't have any more flossers. Where's my Amazon tubes? I heard yesterday about some startup. They're making tubes. And they're going to connect every apartment with tubes. And then you can just type in what you want on Amazon, and it shows up in a tube. Mm, it's peaceful now. That's right. That's right. You know, imagine we did that to society. Yo. Think about it. Think about it. What if it turned out that 80% of people in society were like the non-subscribers on Twitch? Think about it. Right? What was the, was the Mitt Romney quote? 47% of Americans don't pay taxes? Look, I don't know if it's true. Certainly don't like Mitt Romney, but what if half the people are mooches? Think about it. About it. Think about how great society would be if all the mooches were gone, right? Yeah, like the government. Yeah, man, think about it. Do I write tests? Yeah, I always write tests. Look, tests are not like, I love tests. I love tests. Uh, you know, one of the guys at Kama who, who did like all our CI, uh, he, he really like showed me how amazing tests are. And now every time I start a new project, I write CI for it. And every time CI fails or like I find a bug that wasn't caught by CI, like my plus equals, I add that to CI and it'll never break again. You feel like the non subject like liberal arts people. You know what? People only think this because, like, have you ever met someone who's actually really good at liberal arts? Like I've met a few people who are legitimately like liberal arts geniuses. They've read all the books. Uh, and you talk to them and you're like, wow, you really know something. Um, I think there's an XKCD that talks about this. Here we go. Right, like, th th there's actually really smart people who know all about like history, literature, philosophy. It's just your average person who goes to college and majors in communications didn't learn shit. <laughs> and they give all the liberal arts. See, the thing about computer science and, 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 and math is like, if you went to college and you majored in math or you majored in computer science, like you can't be that bad. Like you could be bad, but you can't be that bad. You can go and you can major in communications and you can be that bad. Um, so don't hate on liberal arts, hate on, I mean, look, 10% of people used to go to college. Now 50% of people go to college. You know, people didn't get smarter. College got dumber. You don't know, but think about it. Think about it. what if we could just put subscriber-only chat on in society? Gender studies is the most valuable degree. Well... You know what? I bet you there's someone out there who's really, really good at gender studies and actually like knows a lot of stuff, right? Here's you can tell if someone knows stuff. See how good their like predictive models are. If people are making good predictive models of the world, regardless of whether you think their their field is stupid, you gotta respect that, right? You gotta respect skill. That's what hacker culture is about, right? That's what I'm trying to talk to you guys about. Like respect, skill, and disrespect, lack of skill. It's not you personally. But it's your lack of skill. You go, you gain skills, and you know how you gain skills? You know how you gain skills? You just hustle. You gotta hustle. And some people don't put in the work and they don't deserve respect. Right? Can we, can we, can we, uh, can we all agree to this? Does everyone agree? You're subscribers, you agree. Soft skills are skills too. There's, there's all kinds of skills, man. But like, you can't tell me that you have un. There's all kinds of skills, but all skills are measurable, right? So there are soft skills, there's hard skills, there's skills in writing, there's skills in business. Uh, there's all kinds of skills, and you gotta respect skill. But some people are like, oh, well, you don't understand. IQ doesn't measure everything. You, you have to see that I'm a really good person. Well, 
Yeah, yeah, you're losing me. You're losing me. IQ doesn't measure everything. You have to see that I can play the piano brilliantly. Oh, well, all right. Let's see you play the piano. See, I'm sold on that, right? Because that's a measurable skill. But, uh, you know, being a good person, sorry. Sorry, that, that's not a measurable skill. Or whatever, like, I'm a human being, man. I'm a human being. O okay, and go on. Go on. I'm emotionally intelligent. <laughs> I'll be like, are you? You know? Uh, like, some people are. Some people are act absolutely brilliant at, like, uh, Like, the people who are emotionally intelligent are like, you know, you use that and you're like the evil with that, you know? Salespeople, the people are actually good. The thing is, there's a lot of clowns in these industries. I mean, there's a lot of clowns in software engineering, too, so. Right. Onyx ResNet. Hmm. Oh, a collection. Oh, Onyx Model Zoo. Oh, look at this. Oh, nice. Oh, boss. All right, here we go. Int A, FP32. Download with sample test data. Bases. Probably clean this up and like protobuf decoding consumed too few bytes. Oh, that's bad. Oh, okay, because I didn't do the right. Let's try that. Oh no. Oh no. My water's boiling. Did I put the stuff in? I forget. I think I might have, or maybe I just opened it. See, I am not a good cook. Uh, I gotta put F there. What, what did I do? Why did I put brackets around it? That was weird. Oops, I lost the T. Seven. Oh, are these the same types as these? Those nets are really big. How big are squeeze nets? Oh, squeeze nets are tiny. Oh, look, offset version. Let's try this squeeze net. Squeeze nets are smaller. We like squeeze nets. But I can't spell squeeze net, so that's a downside. Okay. Filling with zero. Oh, those aren't good. Those are supposed to be initializers. Oh. 
I'm upset by this already. I'm upset by this already. I regret doing this. Thirty one seven. What is seven? Probably an int. Probably ints. Hmm. Int sixty four. have this problem. This is done for batches. in inputs. First thing we can't do is a clip. We've got to figure out what a clip is. Someone want to look and see what offset that model I chose is? 
and see if it's going to be a lot of weird stuff or just a little weird stuff. I think I know what clip is. Clip is just like max, but the other way. Do we support that? We might not actually. We do with some weird combinations of like ReLUs and ads and stuff. Yeah, clip is just min max. I'm, I hope we support. No clip. Do we not support min and max? This is a big problem if we don't. Oh, we support? No, but those are different mins and maxes. I think it's called a max. In uh, I think they're implementing our ReLU six. Um, okay, if we want to do min, so let's say the min is like three. Um, so we're going to subtract the min here. And then we have ReLU. Uh, and we add the min back. And then for max, okay, if we have a max of like, yeah, that should work. It should just be that. Write a test for clip. We should probably actually write min and max as well and then write it in terms of that. It'd probably be a nicer thing to write. And we can definitely write ReLU6 in terms of that. I don't know. Whatever. We wrote clip. Global average pool. Okay. Okay. By the way, just, just to show you how far we actually are coming, um, let me just add a Global average pool. 
We all ask for that. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't write it like that, though. Like, you think you can write it like that? You think that's a good idea, but it's not. And because you're, you're generating the index, right? Think of what you actually have to do in order to run that thing. You're making a list of all the indices, or maybe you're making another vector of where it's greater and less. But still, you're doing two full, think of your memory access patterns then, right? Like you can say, oh, well, you know, you're, you're iterating over it multiple times, but I'm not creating any new memory. And that's the key. I, I, when, I write the, uh, when I write the lazy JIT, I'm going to make tiny grad lazy and write a JIT for it. We have to support global average pool. Can you believe that? Can you believe that's an op? So I just need to do what? Mean across the second two axes? I can't believe that's an op. Global average pool, it applies average pooling across values in the same channel. What's a channel? Oh, it's NCHW. P, the default is two. Okay. <laughs> mean, what, they, they give you the example right here. I call my op for mean. Mean is, a, mean is an HL op. Access equals that and keep dim equals. Type shape is not supported. Is that a reshape? Wait, what? How is that an op? It outputs a one D in sixty four. Oh, come on, that can't be an op. Nobody actually wants that op. That's a stupid op. I'm not supporting that. I'm offended and I'm not supporting that. Constant. These are stupid ops. Mm. Cannot parse for name is value. What's data type four?
attribute error data type. Oh, dot T. Oh, we need a T. Okay. Gather, unsqueeze. I don't know about these. These seem pretty stupid. We have to move to a different nap. I don't like this nap anymore. Alex Nat. Oh my god, Alex Nats are so big. I'm not gonna sit here and wait while that downloads. Okay. Inception V1. Oh, that's wrong. Clip was a reasonable thing to support. I'm happy we added clip. Cannot reshape array of size zero. Try a different one. <laughs> Efficient net light four. VGG, yeah, but VGG is so big. I don't want to sit here while VGG downloads. It's not that it's simple. It's just like these things are just like not well compiled. Why does it need a shape operator? Googling it. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, they're using dilations. Okay, we don't support dilated combs. That's a deep issue. See, at Comma, we really keep things simple. What was the problem with Inception? Oh, see, look at this offset version. What about ResNet? Yeah, we can do ResNet. The problem with ResNet, okay, I don't understand this. This is a different problem. Um, cannot reshape array of size zero. Mm, clip one max. Dimension is one, how come raw data is zero? Oh, I see, it has a different data type. Oh, this is just the same as this then. Just do attribute parse here. No, because that's weird, it's float data. It just doesn't have raw data, okay.
Okay. We have a clip with an unspecified min. Is that supported? Oh, because it has multiple inputs. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, 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 that's fine. Um, if min and min opt and max in opt. Why do they allow this so many different ways? Like Onyx is so complicated. The open pilot model was simple because I hate, you know, because we look at it and I just hate all of that complexity. Okay, cool. All right, we're back to shapes and gathers and crap. Great. But we do not support the other way of doing clip. <coughs> Had to pass in tensors for that. Gather is the most annoying one. I don't even understand why that needs to happen. All right, fine, we'll wait forever for ResNet to download. It's not actually too bad. ResNet. Let's go ResNet. Uh, no, I don't know what I did wrong there. This, 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 this. GitHub color theme. Sweet. Okay. That's simple. That's just a conv without a... Uh... That's just a conv without bias. That's okay. a joke, right? My, my weight's not the right size. I have to extract the parameters from the... That's just upsetting. How come the open pilot one just worked and none of these other ones do? Why is it not right? I can I can extract it, but it's just a lot of effort. Do you know what I mean? Okay, let's even see if it's right. Okay. So I would expect then 
this to be seven times seven times three. Okay, and it has 64 channels out. Mm. Should we write the reshape? It's a one liner. Okay, there better not be more bullshit. If there's any more bullshit, uh, I'm gonna be upset. Minus one, x dot shape sub one, op sub kernel shape uh, zero, might be backwards. Unsupported batch normalization. Oh, yeah, so what a great op. Oh, good thing we're going to support that. Okay, flatten doesn't have an axis parameter. That is okay. Tuple out of range. Again, oh, this is the same problem. The weights are, uh, the weight matrix is just stored as junk. Is there something I'm not understanding here? Because these look like they're correct. Like there, there's your shape right there. And it's being filled with zeros. There might be a way to get this shape and I'm just not doing it right. Okay, before we do this more, let's see, because this, this might actually not be necessary. I, I think there's got to be a way. Where, where's my fillings? Um, okay, these just aren't right. They're not real inputs, they're initialized inputs. This inputs, initializer. I don't know what all this float data crap is. Okay, like these are kind of right. Do you see what I mean? <coughs> Mod should maybe add rules to stream. Yeah, that's right, because you were probably trying to say a dumb word. And if you're trying to say a dumb word, uh, why would we want you to say it? Why would, we, why would we tell you what the rules are? The best rules are completely, uh, you know, they're just, they're just, you have to discover them. And if you did something wrong, don't worry, you'll be banned. More. Okay. There's all these dims and like, that's probably right. Oh, we know I'm really stupid. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We just have to do that. Oh, I knew it wasn't that bad. Okay, I just had a bug in my loader. All right, this is stupid. That can go and that can go. Mm. Okay. Um, axes don't match array. 
a different problem. Oh, well. Should you probably support that? Should probably support that in my map malop. See the problem? So this is a vector times a matrix, which actually should be allowed. So let's go down here to tensor and to my map malop. And the problem is if X shape is, this is not a batch size. Okay, batch size is one, groups is one, that's fine. Yeah. Maybe I just say if length x dot shape should fix that. Mm. Axes don't match array. Down to my permute op, but I think the only thing I'm passing in there now is zero, right? Length x dot shape equals one, order equals zero. Otherwise, order equals complicated crap. Hmm. Fix that. Okay, now the only problem is in outputs. It's just called something else in the ResNet. Uh, Did I not print that? I don't understand what's wrong. Are there no outputs? Oh. Did you guys catch what I was doing here? That, that's just my bug here. I was changing the wrong one. Okay. What's the output called? called ResNet 15 Dense Forward. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, now it's not gonna work because batch normalization is an unsupported app. Uh, oh, also, all of these things probably shouldn't be initialized to zeros. I think actually it's pretty easy to just do this. So let's go here. Um, if np.name and tensor is continue. Let me get rid of that there. Great. So the only input is actually called the word data. Data. Okay. Uh, tiny grad out and torch out.
Converter is not implemented. <laughs> ah, the torch one doesn't work. The torch one doesn't work. What a meme. What a meme. How does this run? Oh, just must use ret from last time. Oh, that's pretty bad. This does have to be an exception. Wow, okay, so we can't even use our, we can't even use our, uh... No, everything of mine is implemented. It's just the other guys who didn't implement things. And that's a shame. Okay, uh, we'll implement stupid batch norm, which is, it's a really dumb operation. Uh, all right, let's, I do have an implementation of this. Like, not really. I have to, like, create this? Oh, that's terrible. for a minute. Why do I... Okay, mean var uh, weight bias EPS. Static method Now we refactored out normalize. So now we can say, we'll say what, batch normalize. It's a nice name. Uh, okay, now in batch normalization, what are the arguments? Forward, gamma, beta, running mean, running var. Uh, do we have an EPS? It's fully in args. tinygrad.nn import batch normalize. Wait. How do we get max pool? Oh, we have to do max pool too. That's not too bad. Okay. There is an epsilon here, and there's actually a momentum as well, but we don't need that. Okay. Batch normalize. Um... What are the parameter arguments? Okay. I hope the order is correct. In P1, my mean is this, my variance is this, my weight is this, my bias is this, and opt sub epsilon is my batch norm. Right equals batch normalize. Okay, now we have batch norms. We do have to support max pool as well. Uh, that's actually already supported in tiny grads, which would be pretty easy. I can't believe ResNets are still using max pools. Is 
support pads and stuff in our max pools or do we have to do that externally? Max pool, no, we do not. We have to do that externally and it's called strides, okay. Uh, X.pad2D it's called. Um, and uh, opt uh, pads. Uh, and then, oh no, no, we don't support strides. Oh no, uh, I guess that's fine. I guess we can just, whoa, we don't support stride at max pool. I have a ResNet implementation. How did I write it? Next we stride on the conv. This one just doesn't have any, okay. Fine. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Threat equals x dot. Uh, max pool opt kernel shape uh, x dot conf 2 d strides equals opt dot uh, strides but we're gonna have to come up with a weight matrix for that and those should be rats I mean, it's just it's just disgusting that they that they actually wrote that because like uh, tensor has no attribute max pool yet, so max pool two D. Oh, max underscore pool two D. Okay, uh, conf two D got an unexpected keyword strides. Uh, okay, we have to pass in a weight matrix, but it's actually not too bad. So we can say ret dot shape sub one so tensor dot ones. Uh, the weight matrix is channels in. Um, no. So it's actually tensor dot i ret dot shape sub one because uh, it's a square matrix. Um, can I do a trick with groups here to make it better? Not that I know of. Okay, so it's a square, it's a square convolution because we don't even want the convolution to do anything. We just want it to implement the stride. Um, dot reshape, uh, red dot shape, chan equals red dot shape. So. Tensor I chan reshape, shape equals chan. I'm gonna fix that once and for all. I'm really sick of having to type shape in my stupid reshape. It's like a weird tiny grad quirk. I could make it not even need a tuple, but it's a later thing. Okay. Uh, shape equals chan, chan, one, one, because it's a one by one conv. Left W. And we can pass in W over here. And that should be right. Okay. Input tensor shape does not match the shape of the weights. Well, that's not really right. I don't understand. Oh. Looks 
Something else is wrong. Value's right. Okay, why does max pool take that down to three? The, pro the problem's not in pad, is it? Wait, why is it three by the time it gets to max pool? Is the problem in pad? Huh. Okay, well that's a bug. Why does pad 2D cut that down so much? Doesn't seem right at all. Oh, I'm putting red dot shape here. Why, why did I write X? I didn't write X anywhere else, did I? Stupid Python. Have scope for your variables. Oh. All right, get rid of that true there. Uh, we're still printing stuff in here we can get rid of. I'll uh, comment that out. Uh, if. Cool. Uh, we should call it test resnet. Resnet was the one I wanted to do from the beginning. Don't don't think I don't think I uh, chickened out. Let's make sure we're not getting like nans. Now, unfortunately, we can't test it because the torch converter doesn't support. Uh, those look reasonable. Those look like numbers. Look, guys, we got numbers out. Mm. All right, but it's kind of sad if we're not uh, if we're not actually testing anything. So we should uh, we should do a test. Try and break test efficient net. Look, it tests that it runs. It runs a visual transformer and it runs. Oh my god, visual transformers are so slow now since my change. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, that's so slow now. No, actually, I don't even know it was so slow. It wasn't even that. Uh, oh, it's testing chicken big batch. That's too big for batch. Four is a better batch size. Who likes waiting? Not me. Okay. Um, From test dot test efficient net import chicken image. All right, I'm bringing in the chicken image. Let's take a look at the chicken image. All right, looks like a chicken to me. Can't you tell? Data equals oops chicken image. Uh, 
Thermax? 989. Is that a chicken? That seems pretty confident about it being a chicken. Let's see if that's a chicken. Uh, we can import labels as well. I think they're the same labels that I'm not 100% about. Chicken, 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 chicken. Rose hip. Oh, all that work and we got rose hip. All right, let's see. Maybe they're not the right labels. Um, where are the labels? Just image scores for this. All right, these. Are these are the labels. We were getting nine acorn. Nope, it's not anywhere near chicken or hen of the woods. Hmm. What's the other picture? Car image. Try it on a car image and see what we get. Remote control. Um. Just not anywhere near a car either. Okay, there's probably some bug. That one's a remote control and the chicken image. Is a rose hip. Uh, maybe we shouldn't do these. No, it gives the same answer. The fact that it gives the same answer though is actually kind of nice. Get the same answer for this one too, even if I don't pre-process. No, no, that one's a flagpole. I mean, it's possible that I just have the order wrong. Or it's possible that any one of my ops is broken. Could be any one of them. Which one is it? Could be any of them. I can't run that model in Torch, so that's out. List has no object, pad 2D. Oh, did I make another mistake? No, that's right. Uh, in P if length of in P equals three. Oh, okay, I mean, it's just that. Okay. Running. Wait, I don't like that. Did I break this? No. That seems right. It's just this kind of weird. Uh, running ResNet Onyx. All right, let's find the bug. Which one of these is likely to be broken? Batch normalization. Mean var weight bias apps. Uh, print n exit zero.
spatial equals one. That's probably right. Momentum's only for training. We don't care about that. It's gamma and beta, which are effectively the uh, weight and the bias, right? And that's what I'm passing in. Running mean, running var, that's what we're going to use. And uh, I probably should change the order of this to match that. And then do this very carefully down here. See I still passing? Cool, seems good. Uh, okay. Weight, bias, mean, var, eps. Seems right actually. I don't think my initializer is wrong. It's possible my initializer is wrong here. We are just getting float data. Uh, reshape tensor. That's probably right. Buffer parse. Again, probably right. From PLT uh, import pipe. How do I do this? Let's see if the categories are all over the place or it's in just one. Yeah, they look kind of all over the place. I thought the max was... Well, there's a few that are higher. I, I don't really get this. That looks decent. Let, let, let's put in random data and see if uh, it looks the same. has nothing okay that kind of makes me think that I just have my uh, my things ordered wrong that looks pretty confident that it's one of those two labels and I know there are two labels in ImageNet there's one that's a uh, hen and one that's a uh, chicken again this one's pretty confident in one thing it's just not it's a flagpole so that's Lends toward the belief that it's just one thing. Mm -hmm. We're doing argmax, which is right. Let me just check the uh, shape of this. Should be 1,000. Okay, it's 1,000. There's not like an off by one error. Uh, maybe we can find a test. In the resma, 
model file path. Great, Xiaomi. Uh, that's a weird input shape. Good thing it's not mine. Do we check the input shapes? Yeah, we do. ResNet. It seems like the same pre-processing we're doing. Also sort them. It shouldn't matter if I do a soft max. Could the order be wrong? Wait. Oh, my clip op is not working. He needs to add max after subtracting for the ReLU op. Are you sure about that? I don't think I'm using the clip op either. No, I don't think I do. No, I don't. I don't think he's right. My test passes. In fact, here, I'll show you something. We can try it. Uh, let's do test ops, test ops, test clip. Okay, so we have a test. You say I need to subtract, you say I need to add max here. And I assume that's the fix you want, and the test fails, right? Because I'm right and you're wrong. Uh, and not to be mean, but uh, it just looks that way. And if I'm wrong about anything else, I mean, clearly I'm wrong about something, but I don't think I'm wrong about that. You can't tell some people they're right and some people they're wrong. Everybody lives their own truth. It's pretty confident that it's a rose hip. Oh, I'm just saying. Okay, wait. Is it possible that my... They do link to this, which I'm pretty sure is the same one I'm using. We can check though. Yeah. Looks the same to me. Yeah, okay. Have you verified the pictures after your chicken? I have. <laughs> you want to verify the chicken? the axis in order for this to work. I don't know, we can just do one axis. The image is indeed of a chicken. One of my ops that's wrong. Nice chicken, right? Okay, should we try to find uh, some non terrible? Uh, I 
I mean, try to find some non-terrible model that doesn't use batch normalization that will actually load in uh, the thing. <laughs> that max pool is probably the sketchiest thing I wrote. We do just have a global average pool there. So if I got it wrong, it wouldn't actually say anything. Hmm. Now it's a groom. Maybe this isn't right. Is that not? No, that should be right. You just do it normally and then you stride. All right, we should check if strided max pool works. We should write a test for strided max pool. Either way, it's a nice thing that our library can support. Oh. Yeah, I might be able to make something out, but one op at a time. Well, I could. I can't get Onyx runtime installed on my computer, though. I mean, that's the real thing to do here. Um, all right, let's see what other models we got. AlexNet. Alexander's so big. Alexander has so many weights. Oh, not VGG. That's too many weights. Fainet, RCNN, Densnet. All right, let's try Densnet. It seems pretty good. That seems small. Classic mistake. Blob, we have to change blob to raw. Oh, this one has dilated comms. We're gonna have to support dilated comms. Efficient net light V4. Efficient net, you 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 always come through. All right, what junk is in this model? Let's find out. Op type transpose not supported. Okay, that one doesn't seem too bad. Let's see if there's tons of other crap. We can support transpose. That's just a reshape. Local variable rat reference. Transpose none. Okay. All right, there's just nothing called group. That's okay. Okay.
unsupported transpose. Oh, okay. We'll support transpose. That's not what I want to support. We support that op already pretty much. It's so easy to run the open pilot model. Now it's hard. Okay, uh, local variable R because it's called opt. Transpose, perm, okay. This is actually super easy. We can just say, um, you know what, I'm actually gonna even put this one up here with the easy, simple operations. Not down by max pool, which is terrible. Uh, opt dot permute. Uh, no, sorry, it's np dot permute op sub perm. Measure arrays can be converted to a scalar index because we have to say that one is a uh, magical op. I, I really got to fix that bug too. You have to put in the KW arg uh, here or else you get this error and it's a totally useless error. All right, all right. Okay. Average pool squeeze and mat mall. Those seem okay. I don't know why mat mall is unsupported. Oh, because it's called gem. Oh, they have two names for it. Oh, that's great. Okay. Which, which net are we trying to make work? Efficient net. Oh, we love efficient nets. Okay. Unsupported type average pool. We can support that. Uh, as long as it's not stupid. Okay, strides one by one, kernel shape. Um, assert op sub strides equals one comma one. And we can just do ret dot average pool short division by zero no it's my shape wrong you don't have a gpu for speed what Huh. I'm not even going to go there. Oh, wait, but actually that's an interesting... That's interesting, first off, that that's wrong. Let's see what I got wrong. Uh, it goes way up. Oh. Oh, one of the columns has padding. Got to support padding. Okay, I did support pads, though. It's just wrong. Here, zero, one, one. The pad's in a different order. I think they might be in a different order, um, which is all fine. Supported one squeeze. Squeeze is very simple, it's just a reshape. The 
have so many names for the same thing. And you, you, you kind of wonder why Onyx does this. And it's really very non-minimal. We're gonna replace Onyx. We're gonna replace Onyx with better Onyx. It only has seven ops, so we don't waste tons of time on all these stupid ops. Um, okay, axes equals two and three. Um, so np dot one dot shape uh, enumerate uh, for i dot s in uh, if if i not in uh, ops of what is a stupid thing called axes. Uh, ret equals np dot one dot reshape uh, tuple maker. Uh, S. Okay, unsupported type matmol, because matmol is just or in gem matmol. I'm sure they take slightly different arguments and do slightly different things. But we don't really care, let's try it. Not enough values to unpack. Expected three, got two. Okay, that's fine. We gotta do the same thing we do here. I don't know why I called it A. We can call it the same X that we called it here. It should be fine. Here, trans B. Uh, if trans B in opt. Oh, good thing these matrices aren't square, because if they were square, you'd never get that right. You know? Uh, none type has no reshape. Oh. Yeah. B is none else. That equals x dot w. Should we actually just make linear support? Okay, op type softmax is not supported. I think that one's pretty easy. I have softmax. Go up here with the activation functions. Key error. Okay, great. Ah, uh, because that's not the name of the output. Keys open doors. Uh, softmax zero. It's a lighter. Oh, something's wrong. Something's wrong. Something happened here. Is my broadcasting wrong? I think this is a bug in my broadcasting. That's interesting. Yeah, you see the problem? That's weird broadcasting. It shouldn't actually be supported. That just shouldn't be supported.
Okay, well, it's still a lighter, not a chicken. So much for chicken. But it's interesting that it didn't work on the GPU, so that's probably uh, a key to what's wrong. Let's see if the car one works. This is also a lighter. Okay, so this seems to work worse than uh, Are we getting NANs? I feel like we're getting NANs. I don't know why the argmax of NANs is, no, we're just getting tiny, tiny numbers. Well, tiny numbers. The numbers shouldn't be tiny, just the grad should be tiny. Uh, I think it's because the initializers aren't actually working. We know that when I say GPU equals one and we get some error. Incompatible constructor arguments. Move data. The following arguments are supported. Everything is lighter. Yeah, so there's some serious bug there. Uh, let's see what's going on. So I don't understand what could be wrong here. Maybe shape? Ah, okay. Um, no, it should be okay. Uh, also, I hate NP.prod. Oh, did that fix GPU? Okay, that fixed GPU. Okay, so we have some other problem now. It was because it was returning a float. Hope the streams are gonna be regular. You can't influence my behavior with subscriptions. You can just gain my appreciation. That's how it works. Because uh, if you could influence my behavior, I'd be a whore. And uh, well, I'm not. All right, it all looks good now. What could be wrong? Oh great, they still have batch normalization, so I can't even run this with uh, with Torch to Onyx. Uh... But we, we are we are implementing more stuff, which is good. We're not testing it, which is bad, but it's getting implemented, so. Uh, okay, it's not blob, it's raw. Why can't I run Inception again? Dilations. Google net plus Inception plus dense net. Don't work without dilated convolutions. Uh, Okay, AlexNet is like the most OG basic bullshit. I understand that it's big, but let's give it a try.
Okay, even AlexNet has dilations. Great. Oh, wait, actually, there's a chance they don't have dilations, and it's just, uh... Let's print that. And just, like, equals one or something. Oh, key error dilations. Uh... Okay, I don't even know what an LRN is. Local response normalization, okay. Maybe those other ones were actually fine and they didn't actually, uh, they didn't actually require They might not have actually required uh, dilated convolutions. Okay, no, we have a new problem now. This needs LRN as well. What is LRN? That's the weird normalization you mentioned? What is it? I've never even heard of this. How far back does it go? LRN. It normalizes over local input regions. What? Since version 13? Oh, they just changed it in version 13. Right. Inception doesn't have this. This model is the same as Google Net. Maybe dense networks. I believe in dense net. Dense net's pretty new. I should probably like add multiple tests for these and just comment out the ones that don't that don't pass. Uh, there's ways to like parameterize tests with this. No, that's not what I want. If this one doesn't work, we'll do it. I'm trying to find one that can work in both PyTorch and my stuff. What? This is that same problem. You can't just do that. You can't just have a mall and I, I guess if it's equal to one of the shapes, but that's really bad behavior. Maybe uh, there's some operation. Oh, access and broadcast one. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, okay, fine. in uh, range in p dot one shape uh, new shape 
A new shape sub arg sub broadcast equals minus one. Uh, np one equals np dot one dot reshape new shape. It's called opt. It's not called arg. Uh, tuple object cannot be interpreted as integer, yes, because this has to be uh, range length. Um, okay, well. That's that, okay. Okay, uh, binary op unbroadcastable. So this is actually has to be in all of them. Um, in add sub small um, if n dot op type equals equals mall uh, add sub Uh, strides is not that, is, but is it because I just don't have strides? Or because there are strides and I don't support them? There are strides and I don't support them. Okay, well, that's nice. Um, try this trick again. Uh, does not match the weights because I did not set Chan. Probably add that to tiny grad. Okay, create buffer failed and valid buffer size. Uh, different problem. Okay, division by zero. Um, I don't know if any of that stuff's right. Why don't ResNets work? ResNets were so close. Did I fix enough bugs that maybe they'll work now? This object is not subscriptable. All right, we're back to rose hip. Do we get rose hip on the GPU also? We do. Which makes me think it's not a, how about with torch? Yeah, it's probably right in some way. Just not. The shapes right? I feel like they're not. Okay. It's gotta be this max pool, it's killing us. Do 
Levi 3 max pools tried two. Oh, it is totally wrong. Oh my god, how do we not support strided max pools? This is totally wrong. Oh. Yeah, you can't just do that. Most max pools have the strides the same as the kernel size. Yeah, you're right. That's the problem. Jason, heh, you're right. This stuff's all wrong, man. This is wrong, too. Yeah, this, it's, the default stride is not one by one. The default stride is the, uh, the, uh, oh. Fine. All right, all right, nematode roundworm. That's something. This now did something too. Use an average pool somewhere here. Ah, okay. Assert opt kernel shape equals opt strides. Okay. Uh, we're getting roundworm now. And it's supposed to be a chicken. How about for the one that's supposed to be a car? That also gets us roundworm. Which makes me think there's just mm, more serious issue afoot. Uh, yeah, there's got to be a more serious issue. Okay, we're left with the same max pool crap again. If I did that right. Let's get rid of those plots for now. They're not helpful. Um, where's my max pool? Okay. Assert kernel shape equals strides. Okay, we hit a max pool and then we can't do it anymore. And the dense net has it too. Maybe ResNet v2 doesn't have it? Everyone got rid of max pools, right? No one thinks max pools are cool anymore, right? Everyone knows they're not cool. No max pool? Watch it, yeah. Okay, a different problem. Cannot reshape array of float. All right, all right. Let's, uh, because there's no float data here. Okay. Uh, let's do, let's do this a little bit differently. This one requires reshape adder tensor, uh, not image, sorry. Wow, we actually have more viewers now. 
Okay, uh, data type seven, it has int 64 data. Everything is flow 32 in TinyGrad. Okay, we're back to the max pool again. Okay, the ResNet V2 also has a max pool. Strided max pools. Well, that's why they don't work. Could this cafe one? Could this one work? Come on, everyone knows cafe doesn't have max pools, does it? Max pool. All right, no resnets. AlexNet has LFN. We could try to implement that stride. Wait, some childish shit? Bro, get banned from my channel. You don't read, you get banned. You sub, you get banned. That's life. Some childish shit. I'll show you some childish shit. Get the fuck out of here. All right, cool. Um, all right, well, that's, that has a stride max pool. Shuffle net. Oh yeah, look, I believe in ShuffleNet, boys. It's gonna be ShuffleNet. ShuffleNet is the one. No one would put any max pools in ShuffleNet. Everyone knows they're slow. Okay. This one has a batch normalization, but does not specify an epsilon. Is there a default epsilon? Does Onyx really specify a uh, default apps? Max pool. Oh, come on. Why is everyone using these max pools? Are they good? They can't be good. They can't be, this can't be like, oh yes, we really need max pools. No max, no max pool. Oh, they did not get rid of the max pool in veto. Okay. ZFnet. Oh, that's a really big model. Okay, efficient nets don't have the max pool. We know that, they just don't work. Actually, we don't know that. Because now we've learned, they all use it? No, efficient net doesn't use it. Oh, but down here it does for an average pool. Drives one by one. I don't even understand that. Four up dot strides equals one one. That's probably fine. That should be a global max pool, which is good. Okay, we, we're back to having this problem with add. Uh, how is that? That should be illegal. Have I committed since then? No, I haven't committed in forever. If why did I delete this? I thought that that would capture it. 
if length of p1 dot shape equals equals one uh yeah okay uh, this is a torch problem too i've had exactly this problem in torch um okay actually you know what now uh from tiny grad dot helpers import prod there's a better way to write this if prod length okay this is only lighters uh yeah i mean no max pool and batch norm would be nice Batch norm doesn't work with the torch thing, so we can't validate it using that. Do all of these have them? Just squeeze net use max pools? Did we try squeeze nets? We did not. No strided max pool. See, you might think that I'm doing nothing right now, and I'm just like, you know, uh, like copying and pasting things by hand, but I'm learning. Did you guys know what a squeeze net was? I've never heard of this thing. You know, we're learning. Uh, max pool, great. Did you guys know that they all had max pools? See, I'm never gonna forget that they all have max pools because of how much this annoyed me. Mm. Yo lows, super resolution. Machine translation. Okay, VGG. Does this one use max pool? It's so big. It's so big. Oh my, do I really want to waste half a gigabyte of my computer on this? Not really. I don't really care if it doesn't have max pool. I'm not wasting half a gigabyte. Oh, too big. We have max pool. We just don't have strided max pool. How did my ResNet implementation deal with this? And is this why it doesn't work? It's probably because the ResNet in here doesn't work. Yeah, I get it. I... You know what? How much wrong could it be? If I get the rest of everything right. I think that's probably gonna be kinda right, don't you think? Binoculars, oh. I'm like, okay, it doesn't actually go to three. Umbrella, hey, hey, could everybody say? What's it supposed to be? The car? Oh, I don't trust the car. Let's see if it works with the chicken. Chicken's very reliable. Eggnog! Ugh. No, the problem, okay. I'll, I'll explain the problem with max pool. It's not, I support max pool in tiny grad. I don't support a strided max pool. Um, there's a stride of two. Oh.
fishing network. <laughs> Chicken plus egg equals eggnog. <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, all right, you know what? I don't like these models anymore. Onyx efficient net. Why doesn't the efficient now work? It's the only one we found without a max pool. It runs, it just tells me that I got a lighter. Where's my clips? There's a lot of clips in here too, which make me suspicious. Those all look pretty good. Why does it always return the same thing? Even if I put in random data, I get a lighter. Does this look similar to my problem? I doubt it. No, 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 no. The, the problem is I know exactly what I don't support. Okay, so. Look up what a strided max pool is, and that's the thing that I don't support. Uh, let's print the tensor. Because I find it suspicious that I always get lighter. Why are there so many zeros here? There's too many zeros here. Yeah, there's too many zeros there. Batch normalization, is it wrong? Let's just try this. Some chance it just works. Okay, now we get NANDs. Don't really know how we get NANDs, okay. Maybe there's a bug in batch normalization. Batch norm v3 read variable op. Oh, I don't trust anything that uses a TPU. Hmm. Let's read the documentation for batch normalization. Okay. Batch normalization depends on the input being run. Attributes, input. Okay. Scale. Scale, bias, mean, var, and epsilon. Okay, the GPU thinks it's a lighter too, so that's good. I mean, I don't know, maybe there's supposed to be that many zeros.
We must be losing all the signal somewhere. Okay, zero. Let's see how different they look. They look exactly the same. Oh! Oh! Oh, this might have been really dumb. Oh, we might just have to make sure we put an actual image in. Oh, this might have been working for a while. Okay, come on, chicken. Uh, okay, now just the shape's wrong. That's fine. Uh... Permute. Uh, what is it? NP dot permute. NumPy transpose axes equals none. Okay. And transpose. A wrong input shape. Okay. Um. What do I do? I want that shape to go there. Oh, two, three, one. I just was, no, I just was setting it to, okay, it's a television now. That's better. How about the car? It's a maze and a labyrinth. Well, at least we're getting different things. Oh, I can't believe that. What a waste. What a waste of time. All right. Let's see if we have off by one errors now. I mean, it is kind of a television, don't you think? No, it's not that we can't implement it. Well, that's kind of cool. If you're interested in implementing the max pool, uh, try it. I'm actually gonna put uh, an exception here because that would have wasted a ton of time. Um, no data. You see what I, what the input was called something else. Uh, now this is a long shot, but there's a chance the ResNet's actually going to work as well if I just use a less, uh, it doesn't want to be transposed. Oh, no data for data. Okay, that one actually probably was working. Yeah, it's just called something else. It's called something else and it thinks it's a television system. All right, let's take a look. Wow, it's really confident that it's a television system, which makes me think that the labels just might be in the wrong order. Let's check on that again. You have to get everything right to make things work. Uh, Fish in that light for. Oh, labels.map. Where is labels.map? <laughs> television, television system. Ah! I mean, it looks kind of like a television, right? Just gotta squint a little bit. Should we not be doing the pre-processing on this? Oh, there's different pre-processing for this.
Is it close enough? I don't know, like that stuff can break everything. Let's try it. Test efficient net. Hen! Look at that! Oh, it's a little hen! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! That's right. That's right. All right, let's get rid of these preprocesses. You're going to have to import preprocess. Uh, old equals true. Uh, no, we'll say new equals false. Yeah! All right. If new, do this. Uh, otherwise, do this. Image equals image dot reshape. Ah, actually, I should just make a reshape there. We can just do that. Um, we need to throw preprocess in here. Uh, image equals preprocess image. And we need to import chicken image car image preprocess and labels. We're going to say preprocess uh, new equals true. There we go. All right. Let's make sure we didn't break the other test. No, 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 my text file is good, don't worry. All these are pretty constant. All right, cool. Look at that. And look how confident it is about it being a hen. Look at that level of confidence. Uh, I could set that to false. All right. You all ready for the second test? This one we're gonna try blind. If I change chicken image to car image, is it gonna tell me car? Oh, yeah. Oh, it works. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Fishing net's not even that large. No. Many Onyx models can't be run right now due to max pool with strides not equal to kernel size. That's probably why my ResNet doesn't work. Also, uh, let's add a few more asserts. Uh, 
labels.class equals hen assert uh, car in. Okay, now it's a test. All right, and that's where we run it with the torch backend. Let's run it with the CPU backend. And now let's run it with the GPU backend. There you go. By the way, how fast is that GPU backend, right? Why did I change? Oh, I changed that GPU product, cool. Test Onyx works with Enet also. All right, let the non-subs talk for a little and then I'm done. That's pretty good. Pretty happy. We got efficient nets to run. We found out why the other ones don't run. There weren't too many bugs. We wasted a lot of time because we weren't actually putting our image in. Um, we would have got that one much earlier. What was the second bug? Oh yeah, just my pre-processing. So we had the pre-processing and the fact that we actually weren't uh, putting in an image. That's junk. Shouldn't have done that. All right, cool. No non-subs? You're a sub. I mean, you know, if, if you say no non-subs, then maybe no non-subs. All right, so to recap, so everybody understands what this is, uh, this is, we're running an efficient net light four using our homemade Onyx conversion layer. We can also run the open pilot model and compare it to Torch and that works well. Um, we can run all the tests. So this is the OpenPilot model, and this is the uh, efficient net. So it supports both of those models. And yeah, we, we did it without having to change much of TinyGrad. The only thing that we're gonna have to deal with is those strided pools. I have to think of how we want to deal with that. That very sadly maybe have to be a new fundamental operation uh, for Tiny Grab. But I like this idea of just going through and supporting all the models in Onyx because then I don't have to spend a lot of time writing them. Right? Like, one, one way to check if your neural network library is, is it's kind of like a compiler, right? This thing's really a compiler, what I'm writing. And when you're writing a compiler, it's really hard to write tests that don't look like here's a ton of possible inputs, just see what it does on all of them. Uh, where do I implement uh, conf 2 d uh, Okay, so I'll show you. So this is the MLOps layer. Uh, oh, there's some, there's a little bit of indirection, uh, which is a little weird. Yeah, that conf 2 d is actually being uh, registered down here. Uh, this registers all the MLOps math operations. Yeah, I'm sorry that's a little confusing. Uh, so you'll find COM2D here, right? Um, so this is the implementation of COM2D. Uh, you see it's actually really simple. This is the forward, this is the backward. And then these processing ops are what actually runs on the specific accelerator. So if we go into ops CPU, you can see that my processing op dispatcher is here. We have the three the actual code for the convolutions here. Um, in GPU, it's the same thing. There's my dispatcher. I just wrote this dispatcher this morning. I'm gonna clean it up. I really wanna refactor these kernels to use way more similar code. There's a ton of wasted lines here um, when I figure out how to, how to do it exactly. And then this is the torch one. Uh, so the torch one's a bit more refactored. Uh, it has a simpler processing op. This is the conv T, which is a transposed convolution. And this is the weights. And the reason that there's three of them is because you have to compute both the gradients. Uh, any other questions from subs? 
How about the non-subs can stand here and watch while the subs get to ask questions, even if they're slightly off topic? My gosh, thank you for subscribing. Tier one for three months in advance. I'm sorry if I don't stream and let you down. Mm. Oh, the land, I don't really wanna talk about the land. I don't wanna talk that off topic. Uh, I'm talking about ML. Uh, but don't worry, it's, it's, it's acceptable as a question. Uh, so you're using convolution now, but want to do pooling? No, bro. No. Okay, the problem with the pooling, and let's see, maybe one of you, maybe this is your call to action and you can do something about it. You got to do it beautifully because everything in Tiny Grad is beautiful. Robin Brinkler, thank you for gifting subs. My gosh, thank you for gifting subs. I appreciate you. Um, is really optimizing the winning strategy. I mean, yeah. All right, so I'll show you something now. All right, so let's go to test ResNet here. And I can do all of all of TinyGrad's niceties work now. So we can like do print LLOps equals one, right? This prints all the low-level operations that are actually being run. And the low-level operations are very simple. So you see here where it's doing all these like binary ops and unary ops. Uh even going back to this reshape and this, wow, this slice does absolutely nothing. You can see it's trivially just nothing. This is a no-op, right? This no-op right now is making a copy. Uh, that one's not a, no a nothing, but that one's something. Uh, but this is a no-op, right? All of these ops between the two comps um, can be folded into, uh, can be folded into, into one thing. So we'll, we'll, we'll do that. We'll just, we'll just fold it down. Uh, like we can come up with, because this intermediate layer is so simple, we, we, we can do really fancy optimizations on it because it's really simple to specify what the full behavior of it is, right? It's really hard to specify the full behavior of Onyx because it's really large. Uh, there's a ton of operations. And they all do different sorts of things. But once you get down to just this, it's like, okay, well, we know what add is. We know what sub is. We know what ReLU is. And even the broadcasting is very simple here. Like there's no there's no ambiguity in this interface. You know what you know what you can think about it. Tiny Grad is a risk instruction set for neural networks. Right? And it's a compiler. It's really a compiler. Um, you have multiple levels of, of operations, and this is the uh, this is like the lowest uh, level right before the assembly. And then the thing is outputted to assembly. It's a, it's a compiler, right? Um, So yeah, all these operations are effectively one thing. And in fact, you can do it even better. They can all be folded into this convolution here. Uh, some of them can be pre-computed, right? So you know in your compiler, if you're compiling any like compiled language and you write like A equals one plus two, it doesn't actually save one and two. The compiler does the math, gets three and sticks three in, uh, in A. Uh, and that's all done uh, you know, before compilation. Uh, so sorry, that's all done before runtime. So that's all done for you for free. So we can do similar stuff here uh, with, with neural nets. Wait, I don't know how that's supposed to work. Oh, this is just a, okay. that's annoying. I mean, it's right, but th this is just a single value. So you see what's, what's getting added and subtracted here is a single value. Um, yeah, and, and the right sort of compiler can, can figure this all out. Uh, and optimize this. All of this can be optimized into one thing. And then basically all we're doing is comp, 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 comp. Uh, yeah. And this can work also with the backward pass, right? There's the things that you actually care about in the backward pass, and then there's the things that you don't. Uh, you can fuse ReLU and batch norm into conv, but only on inference. Well, you can certainly do it on inference, but I'm not even really thinking about it like that. Right? Like, do you see any reference? I mean, conv is reference here. Conv is a really fundamental operation, but there's nothing at all fundamental about batch norm. Batch norm is just... Uh, Yeah, 
Yeah, Batch Web is just a bunch of ads and stuff. I was just, I, sorry, I paused for a second to think about why we're getting rail use there. Oh, these might be clips. This might be my weird implementation of a clip. Which is fine. Because it'll all get compiled. Like all of this stuff. Uh, probably, yeah, up to the conv even, will get shoved in one CUDA kernel. Slices a no op, one CUDA kernel. Um, and then what you're doing, and I did this all by hand with need, you're, you want to optimize all this stuff such that you get the fewest, kernel dispatches are surprisingly expensive uh, with GPUs. Uh, it, because it, it's not the GPU that makes them expensive, it's the CPU. There's so many malics in the driver to do these dispatches that a lot of your models, especially if you're doing small batch size stuff, um, you're limited by just literally how many times you can call coup launch kernel uh, from Python per second. So when you fold this down to less kernels and you do this all offline, uh, Hal Rutten, thank you for gifting subs. Um, how do people decide who to give the subs to? Oh. See, I stay on now. This is this is when I so I rake in the money. When I rake in the money. You know, I, I bought a TV tuner. I bought a TV tuner because eventually we're gonna pop all the way off the stack and we're gonna train tiny voice and tiny grab with tiny CUDA and it's gonna be tiny fast. And I, I want some thin mints, but there's no thin mints in the box. Um, oh, you have the option to give to random people, I see. Cool, level four hype train. That's that's maybe the highest I've ever got. Maybe I got a five once. Killian D, thank you for gifting subs. Ah, uh, tiny is fast. This is gonna be so nice when this is all like, oh, just all these permutes and reshapes. Like, ah, uh, permutes that. That's, not even a permute, right? Like that's a that's a no op permute right there. Look at all these stupid. That must be on a different tensor. But look at all this. This is this is all no ops. Why use Onyx instead of directly jitting from PyTorch? Uh, well, no, I mean I'm not using Onyx. I'm just reading in a bunch of Onyx files. One of the problems with PyTorch is the PyTorch files don't contain how to run the net. The PyTorch files just contain the weights. Um, so yeah, the PyTorch uh, doesn't actually contain the, uh, the, the net like architecture. Pretty nice, right? Go through, look, the first thing it does is a permute. A slice a conv, right? This slice and conv, this is, a, this is a padding operation on the convolution, um, which is why we don't put pads actually in our thing because a smart, a smart uh, JIT will just fuse those, right? This reshape and this add, I mean, you don't really need that, right? Uh, but again, all this stuff, all that. Even that, maybe, no, maybe not that. All that can be fused. Hallie Rutten, thank you for gifting more subs. You're, you're the biggest, who's the biggest sub gifter in here? Um, chat pause due to scroll. So yeah, we'll, we'll, wait, is this like frozen? My Twitch froze or something. I don't really understand how. Safari froze? I'm just Twitch froze. I'm gonna close this and reopen it. Uh, let's 
that's back. Whoa, level five, whoa. Uh, why PyTorch can't load Onyx models? That's a good question, I don't really know. Some guy wrote something that like kind of does it, but um, I mean, look, I don't blame them. It's Onyx, has, they have like two names for map models and stuff. Yeah, um, it's similar to what XSLA wants to achieve. Yeah, but have you seen how many ops XLA has? XLA has so many ops, right? Like it is like XLA, but it's like tiny XLA. I think, no, I was talking to one of the Tentiflow guys and he says I wasn't right. I thought XLA had like a decode JPEG. Um, so close to level five, wow. Wait, no, we're at level five. We, we, we can get Super Gamer, a prime sub. Does that help the hype train? Uh, Jam isn't Matrix Matrix and Matt Mull isn't Matrix Scalar. Oh, I think you're right. I think you're right. And I think that explains, I just added support for that. I hope I didn't break anything when I added support for that. I just added support for uh, Matrix Scalar in my dot and it should be okay. I can't imagine when that would be wrong. Um, every sub and bits helps the hype train. Even, you know, I, I think you're right. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't matter. I just added, like, support for both. But the, the beauty of TinyGrad isn't the crap in Tensor.py. It, it isn't even any of this. It's this interface. It's that all operations can be broken down to these very basic things and then fused at the latest level. And I'm not gonna, it's not a compiler. You're not gonna have to sit there and compile things, it's a JIT, right? So basically the way I'm gonna make this work is TinyGrad's gonna be lazy. It's not until you call .numpy on something that it even, like PyTorch is lazy in the sense of it won't, it'll enqueue the things to CUDA but it won't wait on the CUDA queue. I'm not even gonna have enqueue it to CUDA. I'm just gonna cache it locally and then say, okay, uh, time to run, right? And it will only run exactly what we need. So you can do pallet rootin', wow, more gift subs. Uh, you get a special request. I'll, I'll answer whatever question you want. If, 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 you, if you have any question, uh, I'll, 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 I'll answer it, even if it's very off topic. Even if it's about whether my, you know, right ball is larger than my left ball, I mean, I'll have to go measure, but uh, I'll, I'll answer that. Uh, level five complete. Wait, is that it? Is there a six? Final level. I don't know if I've ever made it to the final level before. Oh, uh, good. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you. I'm glad you enjoyed this stream. Um, yeah, I think we were pretty productive. We got the open pilot model running in no time, and then we had to deal. Well, I know the open pilot model really well too, which is kind of what helped. Um, I don't really know about these max pools. We don't use any max pools in the open pilot models. Don't worry. Um, do you trust max pools to drive your car? I don't. Aaron Pham, wow. Wow, wow, I like this competition, man. This is some real cam girl shit right here. Oh, did you want a question? Brah, brah, it's wild right now. It's wild, we, we just won Twitch. Uh, I appreciate most of you. Uh, this is the highest we've ever got, yeah. 32 subs. Wow. Cool. Yeah, I hope people learn something. Uh, Strided max pool pretty easy by basing the implementation in your convolution operation. Yo, I think you're right. I think you're right. I think what I want to do is... Uh... Yeah, I'll, I'll have to think about it. I'll have to think about it more. 
I mean, that's probably what I should do. In fact, the way that I'm doing the max pulls and average pulls right now, probably I should just replace them with convolutions. I should replace a lot more things with convolutions and then just work to make the convolution app really, really fast. I'm like, whenever you have a convolution followed by a couple of stuff that looks like this, you're going to be able to fold all of this into the convolution. Um, and like, depending on memory access patterns, I think you'll be able to fold it all on the backward pass too. You'll also be able to fold in the optimizer. So there's these kernels called diffused atom kernels uh, that you can get from NVIDIA if you download Apex. But I don't want to have to deal with that. I want the kernel fusion to all be done like right here um, at, this, uh, at this really low level. Yeah, and then we can figure out how to make these kernels super, super fast. Someday we'll do that. You gotta implement the laziness. Um, it's called a graph, I mean, a graph compiler, right? And then it compiles the graph. You'll do these kind of transformation operations on the graph uh, until it folds it all down into just like six ops, six kernel launches, pew, 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 pew. Um, but a convolution is a linear operation and a max pool is not, right? Uh, yeah, well, no, okay, the max is, yeah. So the pool part can be done with the convolution and then I'll do the max afterward. I think I'll just use the comp to kind of like pull out all of the uh, possible channels for the max pool. See what I'm saying? So I, I can use the comp to just like extract the channels and then I can do a max on it. Um, and that will be, uh, will be fast. And the average pool I can straight up do with a convolution. Average pool just is a convolution, right? Uh, implementation will be almost the same, but you replace the dot product with a max. Well, that's if I want to change the kernel, mm, which we could do, which we could do. But probably more what I want to do is replace max pool with a convolution that extracts all the things, then does the max, and then, uh, yeah, yeah, that sounds better. You'll see that I have something that actually almost looks like a convolution. You know what? If one of you wants to write this, I think this is actually quite writable. All right, so you see my pool 2Ds? All right, it's, it's using, um, I'm using a slice and a reshape. All right, I'm using a slice and a reshape and then a mean and a max. But uh, I think this base pool 2D, I think this can be replaced with a convolution. Uh... And then this mean and max will just be across the channel axis. Not exactly the channel axis, but it's something kind of like that, right? Here's your pool 2D. And for average, actually for average, I don't even need this mean here. For average, I'll just replace this with a single convolution. Uh, I will just put them all into one thing. Okay, but that's for another time. Um, Thank you all for watching today. Uh, I appreciate most of you, uh, except for the haters and the losers. Is that what you say? I appreciate everyone except for the haters and the losers. Uh, yeah, I can make a generalized, uh, yeah, for applying a function on sliding windows. And that's kind of like what I'm thinking of doing. I mean, that's what like pool 2D kind of is, but it's limited in how, th this function is the reason that you can't have strides because it's limited, like it actually takes the values um, instead of convolving, uh, fuck the haters and the losers, yes. All right, bye, enjoy your Saturday.